In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, chapter 30A, section 20, relating to the 2020 novel corona outbreak emergency, the January 3rd, 2020, 7 o'clock p.m. public meeting of the Norfolk Zoning Board of Appeals shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group congestion. Alternative public access to this meeting shall be made utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. The software will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the raise your hand function. The meeting will be recorded for future rebroadcast by the Norfolk Community Television. Please note, to attend this meeting, please sign in using your first and last name. If you wish to ask a question or provide comments, please use the raise your hand feature available when you click on your name or in the participant section at the bottom of your screen. If for some reason you are not being recognized, just wave your hand in front of the screen and either Rich McCarthy or Amy Brady will recognize you. At this time, it is now 7.07 .07 p.m. Uh, we had a seven o'clock 112 Myrtle Street variance, which according to my understanding is the applicant has asked for a continuation to our next meeting. Is that correct, Amy? Yes, the applicant asked for a continuation. What is our next available meeting for that? Well, we have, we're meeting on the 17th. We have 194 Main Street. Okay, so we're not gonna do it then. And one and the twenty fourth is a potential town meeting, and we had one forty four Seacock Street then. So one that looks like looks like town meeting is going to be held that night. So that will probably push one forty four to July first. July first, okay. Which brings um, us to July fifteenth. Okay, so we'll put this one off to July. You know what? I'm gonna um. Let's put this one on. Let's put this one on June twenty fourth. Um, only, only just to keep it as a placeholder, okay? So I, could I get a motion to continue the public hearing for 112 Myrtle Street to June 24th at 7.05 p.m.? Um, excuse me, Chris, yeah. we continued um, 144 Seacock to five o'clock okay. on the 24th in case there's town meeting. Thank you, I appreciate that. So we'll make this uh, 112 Myrtle Street. Could we continue motion to continue this to 5.05 p.m. on the 24th of June? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. great. Okay. Aye. Any discussion? Hearing none. All right. Second, uh, second public hearing tonight is 19 Shire Drive, a special <laughs> permit, which is continued from 5620. And I think we have Jim Susie here. Jim, the last time you were here, you were going to update us tonight on what permit you're looking for for 19 Shire Drive. So go ahead. Correct. Um, I have submitted a revised uh, cover page on the application, which um, took out the stuff that we don't need anymore. And um, we also refiled a, an Appendix B relative to the application. Okay. So basically, the only um, variance we have for is the storage of the more than three commercial vehicles. So you're looking for a special permit to allow storage of three or more commercial vehicles in the rear of the lot, and Correct. you're also and you're also looking and you're going to um, you're going to be operating as an allowed use in the as a commercial service, which is allowed in the off highway. Yes. Okay. So can you, do you have your, do you have your map up so you can, we can verify where the rear lot is? Do you have a, um, Amy, do you have that that you can pull up? I can, uh, I'll get that. Let me just. Uh, I can grab it if you want, Rich. Oh, you got it? Okay. I was gonna. Mm. 
Let's try the, the five five twenty layout. Oh yeah. Sorry. No problem. <clears throat> Again, so as you can see, the um, vehicle storage spots are directly to the rear of the building um, okay. and should not be able to be seen from Tri Drive. Okay. And uh, what type of vehicles, Jim, how many vehicles are you looking to put back there? Do you know yet? Um, yeah, they're, all the spaces are labeled as, as to what it is. In fact, I think at the top of the page, there's a list yeah. of how many of, of each vehicle. Right here. So there'll be nine vehicles total, consisting of those vehicles at the top. And then if you pan the plan up so we can see, they're all labeled in their spaces of different lengths. Rich. Yes. You know, I, I guess it goes, this commercial, Amy, can we find out who's, um, who's got all this background noise? Yeah. That's what I was saying. If we could just ask everybody to go on mute if they're not talking, that might be helpful. Yeah. Rich, this commercial services, you know, I mean, I'm looking at his list up there and commercial commercial services versus contractor yard. I mean, I see excavators on that list. I see things that to me are contractor yard type items. Right. Commercial services sounds like more, more of a, an office type building according to our definition. If so pan down, I don't, what is the difference? I don't see, can you pan down? Cause I don't believe there are excavators. Well, doesn't that say front end loader? A front end loader, yes, to load from the stockpile areas out back. Huh? The front end loader will be there to load the trucks from the stockpiles that are out on the, the other portion of the lot. I understand that, Jim, but the problem is I'm trying to define what commercial services is versus a contract yard because I, I just looking at our definition in our zoning bylaws, commercial services seems to be more of an office type structure it doesn't seem to it, it sounds like more of a contractor headquarter if you have a front end loader sitting in your parking lot i mean you know i mean if, if i go to dunkin donuts and there's a front end loader sitting in the parking lot i don't you know it's a little different than a car buying coffee so that's what i'm trying to understand from rich well so this is uh this is kind of the point where we get into the the difference between the commercial service and contractors headquarters where their their vehicles that or equipment that are used in uh, earth removal operations which if if you go into the contractors headquarters you can't store you can't have earth removal equipment at all under that okay. well you can but it's got to be indoors so is that the difference that we allow in a commercial services? We allow the equipment to be outside? I don't, well. Um, I mean, I would think that would be contrary to what we would want. Yeah, well, exactly. So they have to, they have to be inside a building if you go under as a contractor's headquarters. So commercial services, we actually allow the equipment outside. If you get a special permit to store more than. <laughs> yeah. Well, this okay. is, yeah, well, this is uh, exactly the nuance of the bylaw, right? The, is it a commercial service or is it contractors headquarters? Um, now, so I can tell you that uh, 
that's one of the, the fundamental questions on another project in town. And um, I can also tell you that when that comes back before the planning board, that is, um, the board will have to, they're, they'll be asked and they will have to make a determination whether they consider it as a commercial service or contractor's headquarters because they do have similar vehicles that they're asking to, um, well, they haven't got to the ZBA yet, but but they're asking the, to have those type of vehicles outside. Except Rich, this is Don. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> to me, a contractor service is, is where the, the uh, person, the contractor, takes that front end loader and goes to the site. All right. And when I say the site, number was to the customer, to my house. Mm -hmm. Whereas a commercial service, he's using that front end loader to load up his trucks to deliver loom and stone and all that stuff that's back there. So uh, to me, that's, he's not using it as a contractor. He's using it just like somebody would use a forklift uh, or something else. Does that make sense? It does to me as the, as the operation of what he's doing on the site. Exactly. He, I mean, he's selling stuff to get stuff. Oh, no, it's, oh. it's not a retail yard. No, it can't this be a retail yard. This yard is yard. for his business only, which is the maintenance and construction of sports fields. But, but my point is, is he's, he's delivering stuff, all right? And in order to get the stuff into a truck, he needs a front end loader. Correct. In, in my mind, that still makes it a commercial operation versus a contractor operation. Is that, that's, that's the way I look at it. And that's, that's kind of the, the fundamental question about interpretation of the, the bylaw, how you, how you view it, how it fits. All right. Uh, questions from the board. Obviously, I started off. Questions from the board for Jim? Not a, not a question for Jim, but for, for Rich or anybody on the board. Is there any, any examples of any precedence in this area between commercial yards and contractor yards? Commercial yards. So we have... Uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think. We have a bunch, we have several sites on within the town of Norfolk that they are using this equipment and they've for different operations, not necessarily earth earthwork, but associated with their business and they've come under commercial service. So for example, uh, I know like mass building and bridge, they have equipment that they use for building bridges and construction. They're not doing earthwork, but um, and then there's uh, Titan, Titan Environmental in Shire Park. But there are, there are businesses within the town of Norfolk right now that are companies that do build roads, you know, build subdivisions that have this type of equipment as well, particularly down on uh, at least two of them on Valley Street that I know of. So it's... I guess it's, it's kind of hard to, or it makes it a little bit challenging when you have, you're using a similar equipment, but for a different purpose. You know what I mean? So this guy's using a front end loader to put material in, to bring it to a site, to uh, for fields. Um, there'll be another one that will be coming before the town shortly, uh, Mr. Gentile, that has a, a business on, uh, on Dedham Street, similar circumstance. He's got some of the same type of equipment, but he's doing concrete work. I don't really have a. I don't have a great answer. I'm not. Yeah, that. no. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to clarify a, a definition on one or the other, or or, some, or or the differences between the two. That's all. Obviously. Is it, is it, Rich, is it site, is it, is it excavation? Is that sort of the key word? It sounds like when we say contractor headquarters, we were seem to be addressing earth removal type work. Is that the differentials between earth removal type companies and all others that do this type of work? Right. You, perhaps if you wanted to argue that 
a business like this that's not primarily involved in, you know, excavation and relocation of earth, maybe could fall under the, okay, under the contractor's headquarters, but it's, it's, it's very subtle. It becomes, that's very subjective. So um, I do know, the, like I said, this company here, um, they're operating differently. That's why, you know, like a landscape company as well, they have, you know, they do, they do move earth too, but they're not like I'm trying to, I guess, get a sense or um, kind of read into the interpretation when this came about, which was many years ago, that I, that I'm, I'm inferring or interpreting that I think the concern was large earth removal dump trucks and excavators that would be more in heavy construction, which again is subjective. I know. Telling you this. So, so how would you view it if it was a landscaper with a similar operation? Would it be a commercial services? So, landscape business is fit. There is a use. There is that in the in the table, though. So, I mean, it's not it's not one hundred percent applicable because we do have landscape businesses as allowed use. I'm just talking more about the use of the equipment yeah that there's overlap between businesses um and that's what makes it quite frankly kind of hard to interpret and open to interpretation as well um all right so well, i i think i will say i can tell you just for the record though um for tonight's purposes um it's they're looking for storage, the, the vehicles. They are before the planning board um, for this use permit as a commercial service. Um, what, you know, I'm, I'm open to, uh, I mean, I'm- Usually they are not this property, correct? What's that? Not this property. They've already been through the planning board, correct? No, they're still under review through the planning board. Oh, they are? Yeah. With regard to commercial services? Correct. Yes, commercial services. Okay. So we're not actually looking at that tonight. We're not looking at the commercial. Yeah, well, we're not you're, looking at whether they're a commercial service or a contractor headquarters because it's an allowed use in this area. We're just looking at the storage of three or more commercial vehicles. Yeah. The problem so, is what the problem gets to be is the type of vehicle. I yes. I, Yes, yes, I don't. Uh, I'm, almost, I'm almost wondering why, why again, are we putting the cart before the horse when we really need to know from the planning board if this is considered, if, because if the, if the planning board says no, it's, it's not, not, a, not, and you can't put triaxles and front end loaders, what would this do if this, after this board has already determined or accepted this, these findings? He would have to come back before us again, wouldn't Jim? I, yeah. I would believe so. But again, this came up. We had a, a meeting at town hall a while back with Rich, myself, um, Bob Bullock, and Phil from Beta and went through it. And that's kind of where, and I believe it may have been Bob that, that came up with the commercial services use. Again, for what Mr. Brolin does, um, it could be considered a landscaper's business, which is an allowed use. Um, but this is this is the way Bob wanted us to go, I believe. And Rich, if I'm speaking out of turn, say so. No, no, that, that's correct. That's right. Uh, <clears throat> and like I mentioned, just a little segue earlier, um, as I have kind of got further clarification on it, um, the planning board does have the authority within their own as they evaluate the site plan to verify and determine the use as well as part of the, as what's before them. So I know they haven't thus far raised the issue of it not fitting as commercial service, but um, if you think that it, and then perhaps it sounds like that's the case, maybe clarification from the board, planning board that is, about the use would be in order before the considering this special permit. 
if, if, if this was a, um, and Jim, you could jump into it, Richard, another answer. If this was considered a landscaping business, purely a landscaping business, mm -hmm. this would be an allowed use in this district, correct, Rich? Could he have those type of vehicles in his rear yard? I'm looking right now. So. Yes. Yeah, under J seven A two um in the off highway district, which this is, um right. landscaping business is allowed use. And we allow we allow three or more commercial we he could he could and again get a special permit for three front end loaders, three backhoes, whatever he wanted in his rear yard, correct? If it was a landscape business. Yeah. Okay. That's the, that's the. Okay, nope, that helps, that helps, that yeah. helps. Okay, um, other questions from the board? Kevin? I need to form my question. Okay, Mike? I'm all set, thank you. Don? I'm, I'm all set. Yo? I have no question, I'm still a little confused, but I have no additional questions. Okay, what are you confused about? Because we don't want you confused. No, I'm saying, are we going to be voting? Not voting, but we are we talking about one special permit right now for rear yeah. parking of vehicles? We're talking about one special permit. He doesn't whether he he doesn't require a special permit to be a commercial services. That's an allowed use, but he okay. does require a special permit to have three or more commercial vehicles in the rear lot. My right. concern was, you know, what the the fact that they were there's a front end loader and a triaxle vehicle. You know, is are those vehicles that should be sitting out in a parking lot? Is that the intent of this this area? Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I think of special. I think of commercial services like if you were like a rug cleaning business and you had four trucks in your yard. Right. Right. That would be my interpretation right. too. So you know, I mean, I'm just, I, need, I need some clarification before we get to a decision here. Yeah. But otherwise, no additional question. Okay. Kevin, did you formulate your question? Uh, yeah. I, to me, it feels like. I'd like to know how the planning board feels about the use before we close the hearing. That's kind of my reaction. Okay. Based off all the discussion. Yeah. yeah. I have Jim, to agree. This is Joe. I have to agree with what Devin said. Yeah, I do. I do as well. Jim, I apologize, but I think we're going to do this to you again and ask for a continuance on this till we get the some clarification from the planning board. Okay. I mean, we've, we've already met with the planning board. Um, the, the initial plans were reviewed by Bills and Thomas. We've had meetings with the planning board. I've had a couple of meetings with Rich and Phil from Beta and Bob. And to that point, nobody has questioned the use. Well, fortunately, Jim, I'll speak from behalf of the board. <laughs> they are questioning the use. I don't want to, I think. Um, I think the fact that I don't think uh, without pulling a board, I think we need to clarify it. Otherwise, you might not get a special yeah. permit. I think I think to your benefit, we have to we should continue it till we get clarification. I apologize. I apologize. Okay. This Whatever. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, could I get a um? Would you, uh, when is the planning board meeting again, Rich? Do you know on this matter? So this 16th, is on, I believe. Sixteenth of Jan, uh, June. Uh, June. Sorry. Sixteenth of June. <laughs> And Amy, you said we um, July June twenty fourth looks like it's going to be a wash. And what's our next available meeting after that? July first. Well, the two that we have on June twenty fourth, I guess, will go to July first. So after that would be July fifteenth. Okay. Um, I'm going to put this on for July first because this should be. We should be able to. We by this next meeting, we. Well, gonna... if you, excuse me. What about the meeting on June seventeenth? Uh, that's 194 Main Street. I, I, I understand that, but but this should be pretty short, and we've we've we have inconvenienced um, the um, uh, applicant or made it thrown a lot of different questions and had read that. This should be rather short. If in fact the planning board has a position one way or another the night before, then we should be able to 
have a, a five minute meeting on this. If the planning board hasn't come to a conclusion, that's different. Want to make a motion, Don? Mr. Chairman, it's Mike. Well, I, on that meeting day, we committed to the applicant and to the abutters that we would only deal with the 194 Main Street, and uh, we publicly made that commitment. That would be the only thing we scheduled that night. And okay. so it, it may be five minutes, maybe 45 minutes. We can't predict right, how long right. this. I made that commitment. I did not, was not aware of that. Okay. Do you want me to go after? Yeah. That, what about if it was after, I guess? Okay. I'm gonna, let's, um, so Amy, what was the, um, after June 24th, what was our next meeting? July 1, right? Right. Okay. So I asked, could I get a motion to continue the public hearing for 19 Shire Drive to July 1, 7.05 p.m.? So moved. Second. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Rich, we just got to get, Rich, if you could keep updating us and maybe we can um, have a, we can have a uh, discussion, a working yeah. group discussion, sort of get this thing. Yeah. We have, this is, I think, the third time we've had Jim in, and, um, and I apologize to him that we're, we don't have this sorted out. Uh, let's get it. Okay. Chris, what time was that on the first? That is 7.05. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. It is now 7.32. A little behind schedule. Uh, we have a 81 Pond Street special permit application. Joe, do you have the uh, notice of public hearing available? Actually, I don't. It wasn't posted for me to pull it up off the uh, town's webpage. But oh, I'm sorry. I emailed it to you this afternoon. But oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was looking for it on the webpage. If you put it on the screen, I'll read it. Okay. We'll get it. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm sorry, Joe. There were some last minute um emails. That's okay. It's just like I, I didn't get a chance to check the emails before this meeting. I was coming off of regular work. And zoning board members, I did not send you a package tonight. I apologize for that. <clears throat> okay. All right. So uh, notices here by. All right. I'm gonna clean it up. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, one second. Notice here by given in accordance with Chapter 48 of the Massachusetts General Laws and all amendments thereto, and in accordance with the governor's order suspending. Oh, let me back that up for a second. Uh, but should I read that whole first part? Uh, yes, Joe. Okay. And in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 20, relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, that a public hearing will be held by the Zoning Board of Appeals on June 3rd, 2020. This meeting shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group congestion, congregate, excuse me, group congregation. All, Alternative public access to this meeting shall be made utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software uh, per the link for remote access. The meeting will be recorded for future rebroadcast by Norfolk Community Television. Joint Excursions LLC at 7, 10 p.m. for special permit pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 9 as amended and Section J7A1B of Norfolk Zoning Bylaws to allow outdoor storage of more than one commercial vehicle limited to the rear yard. The property is located at 81 Pond Street, assesses map 19, block 72, lot 29, in the C1 zoning district. Thank you very much. All right, who will be presenting for us this evening? Tim Marie McKenzie Powell. How are you? Mr. Chairman, before we begin, I just want to, for the record, Tim, I'd like to recuse myself on this matter. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mike, are you, Mike, you are here this evening, correct? Yep, Mike's there. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Tim Marie McKenzie Fowler. Um, uh, represent Joint Excursions LLC. I'm a property management company. And tonight we're applying for a special parking permit to park uh, six commercial vehicles in the back of our property. And it um, is, I have a parking um, plan from uh, 1993 that shows that 
we should be allowed to do that. So I'm applying for that permit today. Could, could, uh, could we put that, could we put that plan up? Could everybody yeah. keep themselves on mute who is not speaking so that um, we can hear the yeah, applicant? Okay. Marie, do you want to guide us? Can you guide? I don't know if you can guide us through this or if uh, Rich has to do it for you. Actually, I would like to turn the tables over to my friend Al. He can guide you through it all. Al who? <laughs> you know that guy, Al. No, he's, he, he's not allowed to speak. I'm sorry. Mute him. <laughs> Go ahead, Al. He actually will answer all my technical questions, sir. Uh, thank you. Go ahead, Al. Um, so if you look at the rear of the property, Chris, here at uh, six designated parking, seven designated parking spots. Uh, this plan was approved in 1993, and it was stipulated in 93 that the uh, maximum size of the vehicles parked on site would be 30 feet long, uh, eight, six, eight and a half feet wide and 13 and a half feet high and that all vehicles are to be parked inside the building as part of the uh, approved plan and decision. We're asking that the vehicles, which are assortment of pickup trucks, um, there's a bucket truck to change light bulbs in the process of managing property. Um, there's a street sweeper uh, to park those type of vehicles outside, all less than the approved plan. Um, there's, there's sufficient parking on site. Rich, uh, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he's agreed that this is property management as a commercial services. So I think that that issue is off the table. And it's a pretty simple special permit. I hope so. Commercial service, yes. <laughs> so Rich, you've reviewed this. So you want to give us a little uh, of your insight here? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, as far as um, review the file from the 93 uh, parking plan, I think the only thing, if I don't mind, I'll just screen sharing, I did talk about is, uh, is filing for, and I guess I was talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, the F11 from last year, there wasn't a final um, uh, decision on that, but we did, so the town did change the uh, F11 process in November last year, which uh, requires some similarities from the old bylaws. We'll take and answer, and I talked to Al about this, answering some of the questions in that bylaw, taking a look at what the previous approved plan was. And actually, you know I'll put it back on the screen just to. So this plan. Uh, this plan was based on parking for uh, here. I'm going to zoom in. Office and manufacturing. And so what I discussed was that the use is a commercial service as a property management, that the the F eleven would just go through that to to verify that the parking numbers are sufficient on the property for the commercial service based on the parking bylaw. There is under section uh, F of the parking bylaw, similar, actually similar, if I'll, I'll read you the section of the bylaw in section F7, when it comes to require parking spaces um, under section F7B18, there's a, sp a space in a manufacturing, retail, professional, and general office that is specifically allocated for storage and or shipping and receiving. So that parking requirement is based on one per 500, which is identical to the old requirement here for manufacturing. And then they have all, so I think just from a 
technical standpoint, it'd be good to just have that F11 be processed, go through the process and validate that there is no necessity for further site plan review or not. That's really the only thing that I don't, the vehicles are not, the vehicles are fine as far as, as they've been described, not have an issue of this like what I could tell. They fall within the commercial service. And that's that's really it. Beyond that, um, the one thing I did talk to Al a little bit is we've had some F11s that we did since the change in November. And we've been asking for site plans that were approved much many, many years ago for as-built plans because they weren't on record with the planning board. And we did talk about that. And I understand that the building did get occupancy many, many, many moons ago. So I, I, I understand that. But so um, you'll be, just for comparison purpose, we just did an F11 on uh, 114 Pond Street. It will be coming to you shortly. So they got a, as far as the F11 determination, didn't need any further site plan review. But we did ask for um, an as-built plan, which they'll be uh, providing to us. So it was really the, that kind of summize, sums up what, uh, and we and I guess I want the last point. I know Al talked about the previous F11, but I don't think there was anything, and I'm open to uh, learning, that would grandfather in the other, the previous F11 because, um, it wasn't any action that would exercise like a building permit or anything like that to grandfather it in the previous F11. So like I said, I think open to discussion. How could you list, could you list those vehicles again for us? I think, you, I think you said a street sweeper, a um, couple of pickup trucks. A bucket, a bucket truck to change the parking truck. lot light bulbs. Okay. Uh, and then an assortment of pickup trucks. And then pickup trucks. Okay. Yeah. So no excavators, no, no. front end loaders, no triaxle vehicles. No. 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 And, and I'd and I'd like just like to bring to your attention, Chris, that this this property here has had two previous F elevens, which uh, you know, similar type of businesses, all defined as commercial services, all stated um, sufficient parking for a commercial service in the building. So, you know, we're, we're giving the building inspector two cracks at this. This is two previous F-11s. I, I really didn't want Rich to bring up the pre previous F-11s, but now that it has, I have to, I have to defend the process that's been uh, applied for previously. And, you know, the building inspector illegally entered this property. You know, the town hired an investigator and he was found that he abused the property rights here. He's never answered the second F-11 in writing, which he's required to do under the Norfolk zone. He's, he made these people pay for a second permit fee. You know, it's, it's beyond insanity. He we're, chased, you know, he chased. We're, you know, we're going to, we're, we're not going to get into that because that, again, the F-11s, the planning board, and we got to, and we want to get through this permit issue. Um, I appreciate that. There's sufficient you, parking. Uh, Tim Ray Rao, is this a is this paved rear parking or no, paved? Uh, paved. Is it paved? Uh, some of it's paved, some of it isn't. So this but is on the but on the uh, on the the approved plan, it shows some of it paved and some of it not. Right, See, so you the, have crushed crushed stone, existing crushed stone in the rear. You got asphalt paving in the front. Okay. So it's going to be crushed thrown in the rear. Yeah, there's... that's right. That's what that's that's what the site plan had, and that's what is there today. And, and Rich, that's, are... allowed. that's allowed, correct, Rich? So under this site plan that was previously approved today, if you had to start over, you the bylaw you have to have Requires asphalt, right? Right. Because he had a previous site plan that this is okay. Correct. And similar with the. Uh, the handicap parking in the front, you can't do that today, but that's grandfathered in as far as the permissible. That was on the old. But again, we're not approved. We're not, uh, no. we're not addressing. Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Questions from the board. 
Um, Joe? No, I have no nothing additional. Kevin? Kevin? Your mic's off. Sorry, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. We have Sorry about that. No questions. All right, Mike? All set. Uh, Tim, you recused yourself, Don. All set. All set? All right. Um, any questions from the audience? Do we have any of the audience with any questions with regard to this matter? Amy, any hands being raised? Anybody flaring in the window? Okay. All right. No. Very good. I make a motion then to close the public hearing for 81 Pond Street. So moved. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, Timurey, we will um, we will probably all those, all those in favor. Yes, all those all those in favor. Aye. Thank you. Aye. All right, uh, Timurey, we will we may not get to deliberate this this evening. Um, if we do, we will certainly get back to you. If not, we'll deliberate at our next scheduled meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Nope. Thank you, and thanks, Al, for your technical assistance. Thank you, Al. You're welcome. Okay. We are at 7.42, and I think we're going to um, now continue the Abbeville Comprehensive Permit. Um, I think the only, is is, Don, is uh, Dan Hill on yet, Amy? Yeah, he came on. Josie's here too, by the way. Okay, I, yeah, I can't see her on my screen, but that's great. Okay, so um, at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Tommy DePlacido and um, have him continue the public hearing process for Abbeville. Uh, Tom, go ahead. Tom, you're on mute. Okay. Yep. Good evening, uh, ZBA members and everyone in the audience. Um, I'm going to turn it over to John Smolak just to bring everybody up to date. And uh, then actually, we're going to do a, a brief overview with um, Rick Goudreau with uh, revisions to the site plan, Matt Merver, and uh, with landscape plan, and then hear from uh, Beta. Um, with that, I'd like to just have uh, John Smolak step in and uh, bring everybody up to date. John, before you start speaking, uh, Bill McGrath does have a conflict at 8.30. So, John, as you're formulating your discussion, is there any way we can probably try to get uh, Beta in here somewhere around 8 o'clock, just in case he has to leave us? Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's no problem. I, I have a very uh, brief introduction. And uh, since Tom already stole my thunder on the introductions, I guess I'll have to go into my presentation quickly. Huh. Just so you know, we just want to be able to hear from Bill and not, sure. uh, not allow him to uh, participate. Sure. Sure. Sorry to so, uh, sure. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, other members of the board. Uh, the record, John Smolak, attorney for the applicants. Since our last hearing in early May, uh, the board's uh, received a uh, construction management plan that was dated May 15th, 2020. We've updated the list of waivers. Uh, we've uh, revised uh, or prepared written responses to uh, letters received from uh, cert um, certain members of the public, including uh, Karen McCabe, as well as camp certain Camden Way residents in Franklin. Uh, we've also received uh, peer review comments uh, from Beta Group concerning the construction management plan. And uh, those comments have been addressed uh, by the applicant. And also, as you alluded to, Beta Group has also provided comment on the uh, requested uh, waivers. Uh, the only other item we're still waiting for is additional information from uh, the Norfolk DPW and their consultant with regard to water supply and connection matters. And we hope to hear uh, back uh, shortly on those uh, matters. And uh, that's all I had to say as an introduction. And if you'd like to have Beta interject so that uh, we could uh, make sure that he could provide the information that he wanted to provide to the board, uh, happy to uh, turn the discussion over. Uh, Tom, do you, do, you want to, do you want to run through some of the other things before Bill? I mean, I think he's got a little time. Bill, what do you need, about 10, 15 minutes to go through the construction management plan? Yeah, probably not even that much. So why don't we, uh, John, why don't we continue on course and then maybe about 8, 10, we can get Bill in there and have him do his, discuss the construction management plan, okay? 
Okay, that's fine. Um, I guess uh, next on the list was Rick, Rick Woodrow, who was going to provide a overview of the retaining adjustments and other revisions uh, to the plans. Okay. So I'll turn the discussion over to Rick. Hi, good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Rick Goodrow with United Consultants. Um, since our last hearing, we've had an opportunity to uh, have a virtual meeting with the Bader uh, Group, Bill McGrath and his staff, uh, to go over the revisions to the re retaining wall and site grading that were proposed at the last hearing. Um, there were also uh, and there was also an area where we were proposing to install some uh, stone riprap uh, at a one-on-one -on -one slope area uh, towards the north end of the site on the easterly side of the proposed roadway cul-de-sac. Um, and as I said, we've had an opportunity to go over those items. And I believe Matt uh, Marva from Bola is going to talk about some of the landscaping um, that we had uh, discussed at that at that meeting uh, to soften the stone that's being proposed and revisions to the planting of the rear yards where the retaining wall revisions were made um, which are basically lots 11 10 9 and 8 uh, on the on the site development plans so that's basically where we're at with respect to the site civil plans um, we are adding some additional information that was requested. Uh, we've relocated the bus stop as we had discussed at the last airing. Uh, we were able to get in touch with the homes uh, bus company uh, staff and their preference would be that the bus, would, bus stop would be relocated at the intersection oh. area of Road A and Lawrence Street. Uh, Matt's put together, again, uh, Matt from Bowler has put together some details on the bus stop that he's gonna, um, I'm hoping, present this evening. Uh, we've seen him actually, uh, pretty pretty nice structure. Um, and also um, site triangles were requested to be added to the plan, basically taken from the Green International details and added to the site civil plans. And a couple of labeling items were requested as well. So we're, we're basically compiling all of these last few pieces uh, to the site civil plans. And that's, uh, that's where we're at at this point. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Matt, do you want to, uh, should we screen share with you? Would that be easier than? Or can I share my screen? Is that, yeah, I mean. is that okay? Yeah, yeah. So why okay. don't we, we'll. Uh... All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and board members, uh, Matt Merva from Bowler, for the record. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you here and just run through a couple of quick landscape updates that we've made. Uh, can you let me know if you're seeing my screen now? You see your screen. Okay, <clears throat> terrific. Uh, so Rick mentioned we, we've modified the grading behind these homes here to eliminate those stepped retaining walls that we were showing previously. Uh, so we've, we've obviously incorporated landscape updates to that, uh, which I'll run through quickly with you, and then located the bus shelter uh, down at the intersection here. So in terms, I'll start with the bus shelter quickly. Um, we're showing a structure of eight by 10 down behind the sidewalk at the corner of Lawrence Street and our entry drive here. And we've added a uh, proposed schematic detail for what that would look like, both in plan view and cross section, uh, which would just be a, a covered area that would, that would fit a bench. Uh, the base of the shelter would be a stone wall material. And then we would actually have a, uh, uh, some piers and a roof structure that would come up out of that that stone base. So it'll it'll make a nice feature at the entry, um, not look like a standard issue bus shelter, but something more more custom made and incorporating field stone uh, of similar wall material that you'd see across the street on Lawrence, uh, which we're depicting here in the the cross section. Uh, 
moving on to the landscape plan itself, the, the modifications we made there, you can see there's now one retaining wall along this slope. And this is the riprap section that, that Rick mentioned. Uh, we're proposing to seed this slope with the wildflower mix that we're using on other slopes within the project. Uh, and that wouldn't be uh, maintained. Uh, that slope would be left to, to grow in um, over time to, to uh, revegetate, um, but with the immediate effect of, of having that seed take and stabilize the slope. Uh, we'll also provide a fence along the top of that retaining wall just to prevent anybody from accessing uh, that roughly eight foot high retaining wall uh, from either direction. Um, as Rick mentioned, we've provided some landscape screening at the toe of the riprap slope here. We're proposing uh, white pines, which will fill in quickly and, and grow tall and uh, hide the view of that slope from the residents here. Uh, and then also proposed some smaller versions of the same tree, uh, just so we can get that root ball to take in the steeper slope that's on a two to one slope. So same spacing, they'll acclimate quickly and grow quickly. It's a very fast growing tree, uh, but the intent would be that that, that fills in to uh, buffer some of that view to the riprap from, from those homeowners. Those are the main changes to the landscape uh, since the last time you've seen this and just wanted to show what the cross section looks like now. Uh, so we have the two to one slope, the retaining wall, and then the continuation of that two to one slope down to the maintained yard uh, at the homeowner's property. Um, so if the homeowner wants to mow a little bit more of this, they're certainly welcome to, but this would be uh, by the HOA, the, the maintenance and care of that slope. And again, the, the intent is for it to eventually uh, have some pioneer species start to grow in and fill that in as a, a forested slope over time. Uh, that's about it for the landscape changes. I'm glad to answer any questions you might have. We did go over with, with Beta on the Zoom call that uh, Rick mentioned. And I think everyone was in agreement that this was a, uh, the right way to go. And if there are any further comments from them, we're, we're glad to hear them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'll open it up to the board first with questions for Matt. Um, John? Sure, I have a question on the, on the, um, Oh, thank you. On the retaining wall on the fence, just want to clarify with the applicant, that will be maintained by the by the HOA? Above the uh, retaining wall uh, with the fenced in areas, uh, that would be maintained by the HOA. Below the retaining wall area, um, homeowners could uh, maintain that themselves if they wanted to increase the use, you know, the used area in their yard. And the actual structure of the retaining wall on the fence? That would be a HOA. Very good, thank you. And on the, um, on, on the bus stop, will there, will there be lighting there? Or you might have said at the previous meeting, there'd be a, a street light out at the corner there, I just forget. There's an existing street light on the corner. Um, right now, uh, with the residents' request, they didn't want lighting or anything um, out in the front, so we weren't proposing lighting to the to the bus stop area. But there is an existing light down at the street corner that I'm pointing to right now. Yes. Thank you. Other questions from the board? A quick question. Uh, what is the uh, retaining wall uh, face going to be just made out of? Uh, this is an image of it here, Devin. Um, so it's a, a rock face uh, modular wall. This, this one we're showing here has some stain on it to, to model it a little bit. We're not going to have that. It'll just be the, the clean stone color you see under my hand here without the staining element to it. Okay. But that's the, the style of the, the wall itself. Okay. 
if I could, it would be the same wall that's at uh, 18 Union Street, but just not stained. Right. Tommy, how big are the, how, how would the, um, before you get to the two to one slope in the rear of the yards, I don't know if we can get that, the, the picture up again of those homes on that side. What's, what's their backyard going to be before they get to the two to one slope? What are we looking at for a, um, a flat section, or I guess I guess I say a flat lawn section in those rear lots. Chris, they've got about 15 to 30 feet. It sort of varies from house to house, but enough for some mowable lawn area. And then, as as Tom mentioned, they could mow up into that two to one slope a bit in that transition, and and create even a little a little more green lawn area. Um, but the uh, the maintained area is is outlined by this dashed line here. Is that the dashed line? Yes, right, right through. Where you're, where you're pointing right now, it looks like the dashed line is right at the slope. Is that where it's, it's just, so each one has a little bit. Okay, I'm with you. Yep, yep, okay. the dashed line is right at the bottom of the, of the slope. Two to one slope, okay, right. All right, and, um, Chris, can I ask another question? Yeah, of course. Uh, so how tall is that retaining wall going to be? Uh, eight feet maximum. Okay, so you guys are really maximizing the the most amount of uh, backyard area you can based yeah, off your bring, based off your grading scheme. That's right. We could bring the slope closer to the homes and eliminate the retaining wall, probably. But we're we're trying to create some level yard. Uh, for, for each of those. Yep. Uh, Mike, do you have any questions? Josie? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Josie? I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, Don? No, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Joe? Same here. I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, Dan, I think you're in on the call. Do you have any concerns in this area, Dan? Are we just talking about the retaining wall that's on the... Yeah, just the retaining wall in the, uh, the, the landscape. Right side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so that retaining wall is maximum eight feet, but it's variable height. Is there like a... What, what's the range of the height? It's, it's mostly eight feet, Dan. It just tapers at, the, at each end. Um, so it's never it's not taller than eight feet, but it it tapers down at the ends as the slope dies into it essentially. Okay, and and can you explain the fence is is the, is the fence on top of the wall or is it behind it? I, I'm having a hard time visualizing what this looks like. Sure, it's it's right on top. We did a quick cross section here to show that. So it's it's integral to the wall. It fits into the cap of the wall, and it's really just to prevent anybody from walking down this slope and, and falling off of it, essentially. And uh, how tall is the fence? The fence would be, uh, I think, four feet tall. Okay, so that's, that's an addition to the eight-foot wall? Yeah, but that's just a black vinyl chain link fence. You, you wouldn't really see much. It, it's not, not really standing out. It's not like a privacy board fence or anything like that. It's transparent. You're going to see the slope behind it. Right. And and just so I understand, and maybe it's a question for Tom, but the HOA that's going to be set up for this development, it, this is going to be separate than the condo association, right? That that is correct. And the and so where is the, where are the limits of the common areas that? where the HOA is responsible for versus the exclusive use areas that each homeowner has? The condominium would be responsible for the, um, the defined condominium lot that's on the, uh, that's on the, on the uh, plans that were submitted to the board. And then the HOA would be responsible for other areas that are um, um, on the main road, the public, the proposed public road and behind these houses. We would, we would actually, um, it sounds like everybody's in favor of this with the HOA maintaining the wall and behind that area. We could actually define a plan with that um, and show those, those limits on, on a plan, uh, the final plan to be submitted. 
Okay, but right now the wall is within the lot lines, right? So you're going to have to amend the plan to show some kind of legal boundary for where where the HOA property begins and where the individual lots begin. Is that right? It would have to have some type of easement, I would I would believe, a maintenance okay. easement. Mm -hmm. And who's responsible for maintaining? I believe you said that the homeowner is responsible for maintaining the, the land that's in front of the wall and, and the land behind the wall would be the HOA. Is that right? And that would be correct. And the wall itself. Okay. Um, any, anybody in the public has any questions since the group has all uh, asked theirs with regard to the landscape plan and the retaining wall? Amy, I'll leave it up to you if anybody's got a raised hand. I see no hands. Okay. Chris, Chris can I ask another question? Yep. No, Devin, I didn't see your hand. <laughs> I raised my physical hand. <laughs> okay. Um, it's just a question on the uh, constructability. There's kind of on the bottom side of that wall, I'm trying to scale it. You're about five to six feet away from that property line where the wall looks like it's four to six feet in height. How are you going to be, how are you going to get that in without encroaching onto the other property? Kind of in that, in that area right there. This area right here. Yes. So Rick can jump in on this too, but my understanding of, of that wall system is that it's actually a gravity wall. Uh, it's not, doesn't require geo grid going back into the slope um, so that the actual physical weight and, and heft and shape of those stones is what holds it in in place. Um, I'm not the structural engineer, you know, these these will be stamped by a structural engineer when they're bought out by by Tom. Uh, but that's that's my understanding about how those those walls work. Tom, do you have any Anything yeah, so if, I, if, if I could interject, having constructed a, a, a couple of these walls, um, actually over 18 Union Street is one. Uh, we were, they, they designed the blocks, certain widths and things, where that's only maybe four or five feet in, in height. Mm -hmm. so it may not be as wide of a block as the ones that, uh, a wall, for instance, that might be 15 or 16 feet tall that we've done in other areas. But the structural engineer will design that so that uh, we don't encroach on the property line. It's probably going to be a block that's no more than a couple feet wide. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I want to make sure that, you know, obviously it's not limited to just the block. You have to, you know, gravel and anything else behind that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that anything that's part of that wall doesn't extend over that property line. It, it will not, right. that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Nobody else, Amy, with a raised hand? Mm -hmm. Look again. No, I, I see nobody with a raised hand. Okay. Good. Trying to come back in. All right. So it looks as if Tom, we can um, we can have Bill McGrath now before he has to leave us talk about the construction management plan. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. All right. Phil, thank you. Go ahead, Bill. All right. <clears throat> thank uh, you again. Bill McGrath with Beta Group. Um, we had reviewed the construction management plan that Tom had submitted um, and actually had a chance to, uh, to talk to Tom and, and Rick Goudreau as well about it. I, I would say in general, it, it's very well constructed. I think it addresses all of the issues we'd like to see addressed. Um, I'll just We had submitted a, a letter to the board uh, on June 2nd, a couple of days ago. Uh, just summarizing it and, and adding a few comments. Um, and, and we had discussed these comments with, with Tom as well. Uh, but I'll just quickly go through it. Um, so it identifies work hours as Monday through Friday, 7 to 5. Uh, it also allows Saturday, 7 to 5. Uh, no work on Sundays or holidays. And I think that differs just a little bit with the, the draft document, decision document that, that Dan had prepared, uh, just in the sense that I believe the draft document uh, talks about Saturday being eight to five rather than seven to five. Um, 
one thing that, that we did suggest, and I think the board has suggested this on other projects, is that prior to any actual house construction, that the roadway be brought up to binder just to reduce the amount of dust uh, by the, the vehicles coming in and out to construct the houses. Um, and the last thing, I think there should be language uh, in the construction schedule section uh, that ta talks about prohibiting stump dumps on site. Uh, I don't expect that there would be, but I, I think it's good to have that, that language in there. And uh, I believe Tom, what I saw was a total construction time uh, that might be two and a half to three and a half years from start to finish. Yeah, that is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it also uh, runs through the logistics of the construction, uh, talks about construction traffic, uh, approximate number of trucks, uh, personnel, truck routes, staging on site, uh, access and egress from the site. Um, they have committed to a construction pad uh, at the entrance to the site to uh, reduce any tracking of dirt from the site back onto Lawrence Street. Um, and also the committed to the maintenance of, of that as well. Uh, one thing I, I would add to get some specific language in there, uh, that, that none of the contractors employees uh, be allowed to park within the, the public right of way or on any adjacent private property that's not owned by the, the applicant. Uh, it also talks about uh, mitigation, uh, runs through noise mitigation, dust mitigation, uh, talks about sediment erosion control, uh, control of construction waste, uh, and the potential for, for some blasting. Uh, and I think the blasting uh, is really going to be controlled by the, the fire department and the permit that they issue. Uh, and there's some pretty strict protocols in there for pre-blasting surveys, uh, licenses required by the blasting contractor. Uh, so I think that's, that's covered pretty well. I know there's concerns uh, about wells on some of the abutting properties, uh, but if there is blasting required, that would all be covered under the, uh, the pre-blast survey. Uh, one thing I would add, uh, Tom's committed again to having a, a 24 hour complaint phone line uh, for neighbors to call if they, they have issues. Um, the only language I would add there is that uh, the call log be kept and be made, a, made available to the town uh, and the board at its request, just so everyone is aware of uh, any concerns that the neighbors have and hopefully they can be addressed uh, fairly quickly. Uh, and the last piece, uh, there was an appendix provided with some earthwork calculations. Uh, and I'm sure everyone recalls the, the previous development. Uh, we had in excess of uh, a half a million yards of, of material that was being taken off the site. Uh, this is a much reduced site, uh, much reduced earthwork. Uh, the calculations essentially with some assumptions uh, are almost a wash, uh, a balanced site. Um, and I think that that will work. I, I would say the only caveat to that is uh, that taking credit for excavation of the foundations uh, and being able to use that uh, to regrade the site and, and also do some fills for the roadway. Uh, so in order to do that, the work's just going to have to be scheduled uh, so that material is available. So the coordination be between getting permits to construct foundations uh, and doing the road work uh, is going to be important so that we do end up with a balanced site. Uh, if not, there's still really only a, a fairly small amount of material being brought in. Um, it might be 2,800 to 3,000 cubic yards of of material that may end up being brought in, uh, in addition to gravel for the roadway and, and uh, there's a commitment to use whatever loom is available on site 
uh, to the extent possible. There may be some excess loom that, that ends up being taken off the site. Um, but I think in general, uh, it's, it's well constructed. I think it lays everything out. It lays out a, a pretty good detailed schedule of the timeline for, for each of the major tasks from utilities to roadway to foundations to house construction. Uh, so I, I think we're, we're pretty happy with, with what was presented. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Uh, questions from the board for Bill with regard to construction management plan? Evan? No, no questions. Mike? Uh, I thought Bill was very thorough. Thank you. On. I just want to confirm the total project time estimation. Did I hear three and a half years? Uh, two and a half to three and a half, yeah. Mm -hmm. Two and a half to three, okay. okay. Joe? No, no, extra, no other question. Uh, Josie? Is Josie there? Double checking. She is, she's on mute. Let me see if I can unmute her. Yep, yep, I'm here, yes. Any questions, Josie, with regard to construction management plan? No, no, I've already reviewed it, thank you. Okay, and Tim. Tim? Tim, yeah, he dropped off at one point. He dropped off? No, he, he's here, but it, it's funny, he's got some. Tim, can you hear us? I can hear you fine, yeah. Okay, any, any I just unmuted him. On the construction management plan? Yeah, it says on section 2.2, .2, we suggest that the roadway be brought to binder grade rather than subgrade prior to the beginning of the house construction. Is that is that for both roads or just, just the the single family home area? Is that, is that for the townhouses also? We would propose both roads. The same Very good, thank you. Brought the subgrade all at once. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, any questions with regard to construction management plan or comments before we have uh, Bill here? I uh, know I'm good. Thanks, Chris. Okay. All right. We got out of that one easy, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, good. No, and I don't have any I don't have any questions. I think the most important thing a lot of people mentioned up there, and it sounds like Tom's got it covered, is the fact that uh, vehicles cannot start before seven. And they can't be on the uh, they can't be sitting on Lawrence Street or on private property prior to entering the site. So um, I think that's important. Uh, do we have any questions from the public with regard to this uh, construction management plan? Dave Diamond. Dave, you're on mute. Just getting off the double mute. So uh, thanks very much. I want to commend the group. Uh, it's the first time I've been on virtual, and everything seems to be very well organized up on um, the 40B site, up on the town hall site, and looks like Zoom's working great. So uh, I've reviewed the construction uh, plan, uh, Mr. Chairman. I think it's very helpful. Uh, just a couple of things I want to recognize. There were it, concerns we had with the construction plan that was done in the previous instance of Abbeville at the Buckley Man property. A lot of concerns about dust. And... Um, I, one thing I did uh, see in here that I just would like to have confirmed um, is that the trucks will come in full down Mill Street and they'll exit empty down Lawrence Street. And I wanted to see if there's any looping through Brett's Farm Road or anything, but that was my, my first uh, question for you. That, that is correct. Um, we're trying to have one way in, one way out so that uh, one group of residents isn't uh, being overwhelmed by the, uh, the, the trucking when it does occur. Okay. And, and um, actually, yes, nothing would go through Brett Farm or anything like that either, David. Thank you. Uh, I did have um, two additional questions. They're pretty quick. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, um, I was delayed to see in here, seeing the park, um, you know, Park Street development go in. I was delayed to see here that uh, there was a good um, layout of kind of the, the windows of work that would need to be done you know, anywhere from demo on to getting ready to actually build on the property. I just did the quick back of the envelope math and I came up with 123 days on the long end 
um, it might lead to you know a project of construction set up um, you know all the excavation bringing in the blasting bring everything in um, was six months and um, just give you some context for it I, I thought as being someone who's close to the project it would be ideal to be able to get in get everything done get the binder down and then kind of go into the rest of the project I didn't know if that would be the case um, and also it might be helpful for us to just have a, a timeline view and to understand whether some of these things are overlapping uh, I think really what I would like to have is pretty close to an abutter is kind of a worst case scenario if we were to start in April um, you know would we you know next year let's say start in November or something how quickly reasonable concern considerations of weather and things how quickly could get in there and get it ready for uh, construction Tom I'll let you handle that um, actually I, I wanted to try to do some type of timeline like that but not knowing exactly when we have all our permits issued with everything and how weather may affect that if, if we don't have all our permits because um, for instance, we, we have the, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals comprehensive permit, but then we have to go back to mass housing. And sometimes that can take three months, six months, or, or even more to get the final approvals before we start. Obviously, if we start in November or December, that affects the timeline a little bit differently than if we start in April or May. I am happy to do something like that. I'm provided to uh, the board to, to post or to distribute to the residents once I have a better feel of exactly the uh, the, uh, the time the, the, the timeline that we can start on things it's not going to be a huge difference one way or another um, timeline was it with it um, you might if adding this up it was 120 days you might vary 30 days one way or another or something like that shorter or, or longer depending when the final approval um, commences and we can start so just um, mr. chairman I just want to check in on that that's very helpful um, but I just want to check so the intent would be try to interleave this as much as possible and collapse a time frame to get ready for get the road done get ready for building correct uh, you can I, probably you can put something together for us post permit as far yeah. as schedule so that we can see and we'll make it a, i think dan we can make that a condition that there'll be a post permit um, construction schedule showing overlapping of different items occurring prior to construction beginning yeah uh, we can incorporate that. Okay. And also, I just like to um, address that one. You know, it's our intent to go in and get it all done as fast as possible to get the leveling done. Um, you know, at that point in time, we're going to have financing involved. We're paying interest. We want to be able to get it done. So we have incentive right. to get it done as fast as possible, too. Excellent. I just had one more question, and I, I think it's a, one that would be a, a pretty common one for um, for the neighborhood and the, the residents uh, in Franklin, too. Um, the EPSA before the road installed, uh, similar kind of question uh, that we I just had is from the day you start construction or go down there, um, what does that look like? Uh, you know, do we have uh, big heavy equipment in there? What types of activities are happening there? And from the day um, that you do the demo, for instance, what can we expect? All right. I, I think I've joked, uh, you know, Mr. Chairman, that this uh, this is now 320 feet from my hot tub and spa. Um, but I think there are people around. We're just trying to figure out what to expect as far as noise. Number one, I think, and then you know, dust. I think um, isn't going to be as big much of an issue because you're bringing things in. But just curious about getting an understanding of that. Tom, um, I'll let you field that. Yes. Um, actually, demolition-wise, we're going to have to bring in dumpsters, um, of, of course, and excavate different things like that to tear it down. Prior to that happening, we um, will have to have a, a, a specialist come in and just go through the houses and everything just to make sure that we're disposing of everything properly. Um, but all equipment and everything will be um, off the street, probably behind the houses. There's enough... Um, room back there to temporarily store that and then once we start uh, clearing trees everything will just work its way um, further into the site so, and until we can create a uh, you know a low, basically a, an area where to, um, to to store the you know equipment and supplies uh, and we located those areas um, because they seem to need the least amount of fill they were or, or cut 
and they were fairly flat to where the, uh, where the work would begin. So we could set up sort of a, a permanent staging area. Um, and that's, that's not, and when I say permanent, that's permanent <coughs> while we're doing the road work and everything. And then obviously when we do house construction, deliveries would be made for lumber or anything right to that house lot. We're not gonna be moving it one place and then trucking it someplace else within the development. Okay, thank you very much for uh, taking those questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Amy, any other questions from the uh, public? Not seeing any so far. No. Okay, good. All right, Tom, what would you like to tackle next? Um, <laughs> Chairman, uh, I'm gonna get off now. Uh, okay, thank you. I'll check back in later if you're still going. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for thank you. Uh, if I think we've addressed everything on, on our list to go through, um, it probably would be worthwhile to review uh, or start to review waivers that we submitted. And um, I believe there's comments from uh, Bader on that as well, that um, we've got written comments that we can uh, um, look at from, from Bader and maybe go through some of the waivers if that's something that uh, the board is prepared to do. I know, I know Dan likes to do um, conditions before he does waivers. And since this is his expertise, I'm gonna allow Dan to decide, do we wanna do waivers or conditions in or what do you feel? Well, I think given that Bill just left, I, I think we're sort of uh, handicapped here, but I, I really don't want to be doing waivers without having Bill's input because he's the one that's, that, that's no. providing the advice and, and we, we rely on him significantly on, on those issues. All right. Okay. So you want to, uh, want to work on some of the conditions? Sure. Okay. I mean, the one, the one thing that we, um, we're still waiting for, and I think it, it affects some of the conditions is that the DPW has not gotten back to the board yet with regard to the size piping coming off of the causeway. And so that, that limits our ability to discuss the road, uh, tie into um, doing tie-ins to the residents up there, um, who's paying for fittings, who's paying for the pipe. So that's the one area that we, um, we don't have enough insight in tonight to, um, to discuss as part of our conditions. Am I correct in that, um, Tom, my depiction of that? Um, you, you are correct. I'm still waiting for um, information from the DPW and comments back from them. Okay. I should say more information from them and their consultants. Correct. Okay. Dan, I'll turn it over to you for the conditions. Sure. Um, so I, I don't know if, uh, if Amy or Rich, do you want to put up the, um, the current draft on the screen? Dan, do you want to do you want me to put it up, or you want me to screen share with you? Um, we can try screen sh screen sharing. The only problem is my internet connection is a little bit sketchy, and last time we did this, um, okay. I got disconnected. But um, we, we, we can put it up. Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure we have the most recent. Should have six two. Do you want me to email it to you? Six two. I don't yep. think I have that. Yeah. I don't. Okay, I'll just email it to you right now. You you should send it to Rich. He's going to do the screen share. Send it at twelve forty three this morning. <laughs> well, actually, Dan, hopefully you sent it to both of us. Okay, I just sent it. Mr. Chairman, if I may uh, chime in a bit, John Smolak. Um, hey, John. Hi, we we did receive the the draft, and I think it needs a fair amount of additional time to review as well. Uh, happy to go through um, what you think is appropriate, uh, but we want to reserve additional rights to comment on this uh, on this draft. Um, Absolutely, so. we know this is just a draft, and certainly. Um, it, there's going to be some changes to this, of course. So I absolutely understand that, John. Yeah, I, I think this is actually useful just to kind of touch on the on on the outstanding issues. We don't have to talk about language tonight. I, I think it's more useful just to kind of go through this, 
uh, this is this has served as an outline for me as to what the outstanding issues are that that we need to talk about. So um, I would just start, yeah, you know, start from the top. You can scroll past uh, the stuff. Um, and I normally don't draft the findings up front, but we actually had some findings already drafted from a couple years ago when we started this process. Um, you can keep going. Yeah, I keep going. Still the uh, boilerplate jurisdictional issues. We're going to need an updated uh, list of all the plans that have been prepared, architectural plan, plans. Um, yeah, we can go past the uh, groundwater issues. I guess, yeah, why don't you just stop with groundwater actually while we're here. Um, so this, this was a big issue. project on the budding wells. Um, the developer had its own hydrologist prepare a, 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 a report um, predicting uh, impacts on, on budding wells as well as the um, uh, the A well area. Uh, so with this revised project, um, the, the wastewater systems uh, are for the most part either downgraded or cross gradient from any of the budding wells. Uh, the only wells that are anywhere near any of the septic systems uh, would be on the two properties that are on the north side of Boring Street that abut the project site. Um, but according to the groundwater contour maps and the bedrock contour maps that were provided in the earlier stages of the project, uh, it, it doesn't appear that those wells will be in the area of, area of impact for, um, for any of the septic systems that are being proposed. So I know, so I, I don't believe we need any conditions uh, for protection of wells for this project, uh, unlike what we're doing for the uh, Seekonk project. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see any uh, area of impact uh, issues uh, with, with the site. So if anyone wants to rebut that or, or suggest that we put conditions in, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to talk about it. Uh, otherwise, we can skip ahead to traffic um, and, and just scrolling down, I'm just going to pull up my version here while we're talking. So the, um, with respect to traffic safety, uh, I took a look at the, the revised traffic uh, study that was done by Bill Scully and it, it was peer reviewed by Beta. Uh, I, I believe the only data point that's missing from from that report in which we need is, is the site triangles that support the site distance calculations. And I know that Bill is probably not on this call, but um, Tom or John, do you, do you know if Bill is actually provided to you folks or does he have the site triangles that back up the, the intersection site distance calculations? Actually, um, Rick could probably answer that, but we did get them. Um, they were put on the plan and then they were given to Bill and he was satisfied with them. Uh, that was a comment from him probably about a week or two ago, but we did resolve it on that. Okay, I, I think we need... ...making time to take this important learning course. Preventing... Um, I, I, think, I think we need to have Bill uh, provide his calculated site triangles to us, so we have that in the record. Um, and this, so what I'm referring to is the intersection site distance for both the left turn and right turn out of out of the project driveway. Um, he's saying that they're well in excess of what the minimum minimum is under Ashto, and uh, it appears to be the case given just just looking at the aerial photographs from MassGIS. But um, if there are any vegetation clearing. That needs to, if, if there's any vegetation clearing in the right of way that needs to happen, uh, we need to have those clearly delineated on the, on the site plans. Um, what I saw from the site plans seemed to be um, incomplete because the lines don't go far enough down Lawrence Street. So um, maybe if, if you folks can give us a revised submission, you know, this week or next, showing clearly where those site distance triangles are, and then if Bill Scully can supplement 
uh, with his triangles. Now we, I think that could we can cross that off the list. Rick, um, would you, uh, Rick, would you care to comment on that? It's right there. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay, yeah, uh, hey, Rick Goodrow here. Um, Bill Scully, uh, Green International, has prepared a site distance triangle plan um, that I was emailed a copy of, as well as uh, the backup information. Uh, I cannot say if that plan has been submitted to the town. I believe it has. Um, but we can certainly follow up with Bill to make sure that that is, has been submitted and is part of the record. Um, <clears throat> as I had said earlier, we do have the information from Bill uh, and as requested uh, by Beta and their peer review, we will be adding those site distance triangles to the site plan uh, at the entrance of or the connection of Road A um, with Lawrence Street. Yeah, so Rick, on the on the plans that that were submitted recently, I, I do see a, a, a very faint line that that has a label of intersection site distance, but um, it, it's really hard to read the line because it, it, it's really faint, and it and it also doesn't go all the way to the end of the site distance triangle. It's only a, a, a piece of it. So um, if you can double check that, and maybe if you can email me offline and then just point out where these are in the plans, maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. Certainly. Okay. Um, if we want to scroll down to open space, uh, that's section D of the findings. <clears throat> so maybe we can get some clarification tonight as to what the intent is for the open space. Um, is is uh, and when, when I say open space, I'm referring to all the land uh, beyond the project, uh, beyond the cul-de-sac. Is, is that land proposed to be restricted and then held in fee by the homeowner association or are you going to convey it to somebody it uh it, it has been offered to the town if they if they would want to uh hold the conservation restriction um or if they want uh, to take title to the property they could do that um i don't think there's any i don't think there's any interest in doing that so it'd be retained by the um condominium association um as part of their property with um some uh, restrictions on any type of development or anything being um, um, disturbed in that area. And, and just so I'm clear, is, is there, there's going to be a, a homeowner association for the single families and a condo association for the duplexes, right? That is correct. Okay, so would the open space be held by the HOA? It actually is held by the condominium association. And that, that additional land is actually used in um, for the nitrogen loading calculations for the for the uh, septic system that would be required for the condominium as well. Oh, okay, so it's credit land for their for your title five. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it would be credit land. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Um, now, why don't we scroll down? Then I, we can I can modify the language for the open space. Um, so off offsite infrastructure. So we, uh, the findings speak to the point that that the uh, that Lawrence Street has been improved with the bridge and the causeway. Um, the municipal water supply system is adequate, but we need to extend the water main uh, up Lawrence Street to the project site. Um, we are waiting for some more comments from DPW as to uh, what specifications they want to see and what the cost may be. Um, we need to talk about who's going to do the work and at, at whose expense. Um, the DPW, the DPW um, memo uh, indicated that, that, that there would be 15 residential water services to be installed. Um, I understand the comment from today from, from John Smolak was that the applicant was, was not proposing to actually connect the homes, but rather just provide the stubs at, at the driveways or, or the frontage. And I think that's what our expectation was. I don't think the expectation was that you're actually going to hook up homes. But uh, Chris, do you want to talk about that tonight, or do you want to do you want to uh, table that for another night when we can maybe get the DPW here? 
I think, yeah, I mean, we, I think that is the expectation, but let's table that for now. All right, so that's the plug. We're gonna have some conditions on water. Um, the DPW also expressed a concern about the condition of Lawrence Street. There's gonna be um, obviously a trench dug to install the water main coming up. Um, so we're gonna have to discuss uh, who's gonna repair the road after the road's been dug up to install the water main. Um, we can table that for you know the night, and maybe we should ask um, the DPW director to, to come to the or attend the next next meeting. Um, and so now we get to the condition section, and, and section A is is most most uh, mostly uh, boilerplate, and we don't need to get into these specifics uh, tonight. Um, section B is the pre pre construction submissions and um, the construction management plan, usually we review that after the permit's been issued, but uh, we, we have actually a, a fairly robust plan that's been submitted and reviewed already, so we might be able to modify this condition. Um, and again, these are all just boilerplates. Uh, in terms of the escrow account, um, we would uh, typically ask for a $20,000 deposit, uh, then replenishment uh, for or peer review fees. Uh, scrolling down to section C, these are the site development construction conditions. Uh, most of this here is, is also boilerplate language that we've used. Um, most of the language that I use for this, this set of conditions is from the Enclave project, uh, given the similarities, but I've also, and we, that, that was I think two years ago, and in the Seacon project that we're working on now, we've, we've actually improved some of the language of these conditions, so I've incorporated some of that language as well. Um, I'm just scrolling through to, <clears throat> to see if we have any project specific conditions here. Uh, with respect to blasting, um, my understanding is that that there that there's likely to be some some rock removal on the on the site, uh, some ledge removal. Uh, so we have a condition under section C18. Uh, this is a, a condition that we've used in prior projects. Uh, which uh, have some specific uh, requirements for blasting. Um, and just scrolling through here, if anyone wants to talk about any of the conditions, you can feel free to stop me. Um, legal requirements, section D. Uh, this is a home ownership project. So the condition D1 says that this has to be home ownership in perpetuity. It can't be converted to rental units without approval of a Substantial modification to the permit. Hey Dan. Yep. Similar to what uh, I suggested for 144 Seaconk Street with regards to blasting and the fact that most of these properties are on wells, do you think we should consider a condition to survey if blasting is required to survey wells within a certain radius? Just to make sure that those wells aren't, you know, damaged during that blasting. Yeah, we, we could. I mean, my understanding is that that the wells are, are pretty far away, um, but we, we could we could actually measure them and, and, and get some expert get some opinions from maybe Neil uh, Neil Price or Sean Reardon as to what what they would recommend. Um, yeah, I think if we could get like a radius suggestion then we could incorporate that from the blasting. Isn't it 200 feet? Isn't that the, I think that, that might be the requirement, anything within 200 feet? Uh, 250 feet. 250 feet. What is that from, John? Uh, 250 feet from property not owned or controlled by the project. So basically uh, from the property boundary. You mean if there's, if there's a well within that, within that distance? That there would have to be a survey, is that what you're saying? Well, it's a pre blast survey, it's typically a restructure. But a well wouldn't be considered a structure, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But you're concerned about wells, Devin, or are you also concerned about foundations? Well, the foundations would be covered of that pre blast survey, but I, I don't think wells are included in that pre blast survey. We had, on, I think on 144, Dan, I think we have 
we should probably look at the language. Remember we were gonna have, Sean was talking about doing a um, testing of the wells. They're yeah, I don't think we've gotten feedback yet. I, we just drafted that language a week or two ago. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't think I've heard back from anybody. So we need to follow up on that. Yeah, so we might wanna incorporate that as well as what Devin's saying. Sure. And I'm gonna back up one, Dan, on, um, and maybe I jumped, I might be jumping ahead is, on the um, prior to blasting, stabilization, didn't we, um, on 144, didn't we require some stabilization, a bond or something for the stabilization of the property in case for some reason it could not be built? Yeah, uh, and that's in, that's in here, it's, it's further down, it's, it's under it's the down, okay. section. All right, sorry about that, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, all right, so we're in section uh, D now. Um, section D1 is actually the same condition that we have now in the Seekonk and the um, 194 Main Street uh, decision. Uh, section D2 is the requirement that the applicant create a condo condominium for the uh, townhouse units. Um, I'm gonna now modify this to include the HOA for the single families. I, I didn't realize that that was gonna happen for the uh, single families. Uh, so I'll add some language there. Um, uh, section, uh, condition D8, it's the intention of the applicant to obtain town meeting approval for the acceptance of the road. Um, and uh, th this is just a standard condition we have uh, as prerequisites to the submission of the road for town meeting approval. Um, and then section E, we talk about uh, traffic, public safety and fire protection under the section, it's a catch-all. Um, I put in a, a placeholder here for offsite sidewalk mitigation. Um, and uh, it, this is something for the board to, to consider. We lose them. <laughs> Still scrolling. This is Joe. We we discussed the sidewalk offsite a bit last time, didn't we? We're, Joe, we're we're holding off on all that because we 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 have to understand the water main before we can even talk about what else the mitigation. Okay. Dan, are you? Yeah, I'm Dan. back. My my internet my internet is is is. A little sketchy here, so I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so we I got I think we left off at section uh, condition E1 sidewalk mitigation and, and whether the board uh, wants to impose a condition that a sidewalk be installed uh, up Lawrence Street from the uh, end of the sidewalk, which I believe is at the uh, end of the causeway. Um, so maybe we table this until we have a discussion with DBW at the next meeting. Right. Yep. Um, same thing with the uh, repair of, of Lawrence Street. Do we want to impose any kind of condition there? Um, mentioned that before, so we may table that. Right now, louder. All right. <laughs> Bear with me for one second. I'm just going to pull up my document again. You got to get rid of that modem. <laughs> Dial oh, you, no, you got to get some internet service to uh, Waylon for Dan. <laughs> well, all right. I'm, I'm just going to use. Um, I'll, I'll just use what's on the on the Zoom screen. All right, so. Um, Scrolling down to the placeholder here for condition E3 uh, and E4, we're going to plug in any mitigation for the traffic study. Um, let's see, uh, keep keep going. E6, E7. This is all boilerplate. Um, yes, condition E9. Uh, this has been, I think, an improvement from prior decisions. Uh, 
meet with, I, I'm not sure if we have a sub path analysis for this project. Um, if we do, um, it, it might be might be outdated. Uh, Rick, maybe Rick can answer that question. Rick still there? Rick, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Go ahead. Did you, hear my, did you hear my question, Rick? I, I didn't, Dan. I'm sorry. What was your question? So, do you, do we have a swept path analysis and auditor analysis for the project roads? Uh, that would be a Bill Scully question. I can follow up on that as well and get that sent out to you. Okay. Great. All right. So then, scrolling down, that that's section E9. Um, Section 10, uh, this ensures that the driveways are long enough to accommodate uh, all the cars so we don't, we don't have any pickup trucks sticking out into the road. Um, uh, E11, um, E12, still boilerplate, E13, um, uh, base coat, base coat of the of the of the roads have to be installed prior to, to construction activities. Hydrants and water need to be in place. Um, condition E15. Uh, the fire department has uh, what, what I think is actually a really handy checklist of fire code compliance uh, issues that that should be checked off uh, prior to construction activities. So um, if you don't already have that, just check in with the fire chief. It's a it's a, it's a checklist that he can give you. Uh, condition E16, uh, no parking in the roads. Uh, condition E17, there has to be 10 feet between structures, which there is. Uh, moving on to uh, section F, um, landscaping mm -hmm. space. John, did you want to jump in? No? Landscaping. Okay, so uh, this is Relatively standard stuff. Um, we we have always have a condition as to when landscaping has to be installed. Um, there can be a bond for landscaping if, uh, if if you can't get it all done uh, before you want your occupancy permits to be issued. Um, scrolling down to uh, let's see F two is, is similar language in terms of deadlines to install landscaping. Um, for uh, open space, um, I'll modify this so that we have the condo association retaining uh, fee ownership, but with a restriction going to the Conservation Commission. Uh, scroll down to F5 and F6. I guess we're missing F5. Uh, F6. Lamp posts. Uh, Actually, that's a question for the for the applicant. Are you, are you proposing street lamps for the main road? Yes, we are. We're proposing street lamps um, for the for the public road, which would be the responsibility of the HOA, and street lamps for the condominium, which would be responsibility of the condominium association. Okay, so the street lamps would be on the individual lots, but but there would be some kind of easement for the HOA to maintain them. Is that right? Actually, these these would be regular street lights, which would actually be in the right of way, and we'd be asking for an easement to maintain them, or the responsibility to maintain them would stay with the HOA, and not would it would not um, uh, be transferred to the town when its street is accepted. Okay, so do you have a spec sheet that shows what these things look like? Is that yes. part of your plan set? It's in the plan set. Yes. Okay, and I'm not sure if we've reviewed that. Did, did we have? Uh, our landscape architect review that or has that that was reviewed as part of the landscape package by the landscape architect it was submitted to beta uh, as a photometric plan and also uh, cross section and, and illustration of the lamp post. Okay. All right, um, so we can review that uh, between now and the next meeting. Um, any irrigation proposed here? Um, um right now if it would it would be a private well that we would do and um 
but maybe some of the com for some of the common areas within the condominium, I would I would definitely say there's going to be some type of irrigation there. Um, as far as the individual house lots, that would be up to the homeowner. Okay. All right. Um, so moving along to section G, this is stormwater management. Uh, there, there's nothing in this section that's unique to this project. This is our standard language and conditions for review of the stormwater plans that are typically prepared after the permit's been issued. Um, I, I did have a couple concerns though with the big detention basin that's proposed in the, in the back of the site, which has been labeled as pond one. Um, is, is, there, is there an access driveway or something that's gonna be, be available to the town to maintain that, that basin? I didn't see anything on the plan. Rick, can you bring that up, Rick McCarthy? Mm -hmm. Actually, Rick may want to jump in here, but if he's if he can't hear us, I, I do have the answer to that. I am here. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, which plan do you want me to pull up, uh, Rick? The uh, uh, rating plan, if you can. Yeah, the plan set. I should have it. One below the watershed. Yeah. Okay. And it can be the fourth sheet down. Okay. GU3. <coughs> That's a good one. Can you zoom in a little bit, Rich, to that that basin? That's good. Uh, so one of my concerns was just access to the basin. It, 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 is this basin going to be holding runoff from the, the main road that's going to be the public way? Yes, it will. All right, so we need to have DPW to be able to get in there, clean it out, and have access. Yeah, so what we have on the westerly side of the property line of lot 16, which bisects the basin, um, there is a second line running uh, parallel to that property line. And there's a, uh, I believe it's a 10 foot or 12 foot wide access driveway coming off of the road. Basically the center of it is the, the drain line from drain manhole 51 heading out towards drain manhole 56. And then the access drive continues down to the to the rim of the basin. So that's the access driveway. Um, to the east of that, there is a proposed uh, easement line, the dashed line. Um, and if we could go back to the first page of this plan set. So <clears throat> this is the, uh, the plan of land for that area. There's actually going to be an access easement for the, for the drainage that would run from road A down westerly down the driveway of the condominium area. And then you can see the easement starts just to the west of the lot 16 property line and traverses around the basin. Um, and that was done at the request of Bader and that would allow for an easement to be granted to the DPW town of Norfolk to have access over those portions <coughs> of the condominium area. Okay. Um, I, I think it would be helpful to maybe have a separate detail sheet showing the easement area because that, it, it's not really well marked on, on sheet four or, or I mean that, that sheet doesn't show it because it's it doesn't show the roadway for the condo association. So, um, if you could go back to sheet four, Rich McCarthy, yep. and blow up that that area again. Um, so I think what I'm hearing is that there's there's a there's going to be a driveway that's going to be constructed from right. the condominium road, running behind, basically between lot 16 and the, and the first townhouse uh, unit. Correct. Um, so I think I think we need some kind of sheet that shows that detail. 
you know, what the driveway is going to be constructed out of, how wide it is, how wide the easement area is, um, and and then we're going to have, you know, when the roads conveyed to the town, we're going to want to make sure that easement area is also conveyed. Um, and I think we should just get the, um, the feedback from DPW now on whether they're have any concerns about about this basin. The, another concern I had with it is just um, how close it is to the to the homes on lots 15 and 14. Um, I mean, at lot 15 and, and 14 really don't have much of a backyard, and, and the basin is basically right right there. Um, I guess it's actually more lot 15 and 16. Uh, 14 doesn't look that bad, but it it does seem really tight there with those with those folks. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just had, a chance, just had a chance to, to scale that. The house on 15 to the basin is about 36 feet to the top brim elevation, and, and 16 is about 40, 41 feet. So, um, you know, that's basically on, 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 on lot. Uh, 15, you're, you're right at that corner where the W of walkout is to the top rim of the basin, which would actually you know, be crossing the lot line in that area there, yes. Um, you, you're talking 36 feet. All right, um, if we can go back to the decision, Rich. Dan, I was just gonna say that those, those lots still have more than on the other side of the road where that retaining wall was that we were discussing earlier. So it's almost, I think, almost double. Yeah, and that's and that's a that's an issue with respect to those plots. They they really have very little backyard space um, before they they hit that that two to one slope. Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess we're back at the decision. Um, yeah, and, and the rest of this uh, section is uh, boilerplate language that we've had in, in previous decisions. Uh, in section H, these are the affordability requirements. Uh, these are all the same as, as what we've had in the past. Uh, so you can scroll through that, Rich. There's uh, nothing unique in this section. All right, section I is the, our, our surety section. Uh, so, so the requirements that I drafted here uh, mirror the requirements that we now have for the uh, CFONC and the 194 uh, Main Street projects uh, for consistency sake. Um, so it's, in, in, in brief summary, uh, infrastructure has to be constructed as the project's being built. Uh, it can't all wait until the end approved and permitted uh, occupancy permits are going to be tied to completion of, of certain stages of, of the project with the uh, roadways and drainage. Um, you can scroll down, Rich. Um, Tri-party agreements, so the applicant, if the, if the applicant uh, needs occupancy permits to finish and uh, doesn't have everything done, they the applicant can request a substitution of the covenant approach with a, a tri-party agreement with, with the lender uh, to secure the remaining work, uh, which is what the planning board would do in, in, the, in these circumstances. Uh, section, uh, condition I-6 is the condition that, that Chris brought up before that provides for a stabilization bond. Uh, again, we've included this in our prior projects so that if the site's cleared and just left fallow that we've, we've got some money to, to stabilize the site prevent erosion um, and let's see condition uh, section K is, is just governs amendments to the permit which uh, is uh, the same as what we've seen before um, and that's about it so we have a lot of work to do um, this this open issues uh, I, I think what 
my takeaway is of this is that we really need to follow up with DPW on, on some of these big ticket items and then maybe have maybe have someone from DPW participate in the next next meeting. Mr. Chairman, if I could just uh, respond oh. with a couple quick comments. Absolutely. Um, this, um, uh, the conditions in this draft decision, um, I think are, many of them are substantially different from the types of conditions that we saw even a year ago when we had drafted the former Abbeville decision. I think it really adds a, a fairly substantial amount of the increase in cost uh, that we anticipated. So we're going to have to just take a look at the, this and give it a much more hard look uh, to evaluate this. But I just wanted to mention that uh, in passing because uh, there are conditions here that the board has been familiar with apparently with two recent decisions, um, which are, and I'm not sure what the circumstances were in those certain, those, uh, other projects, but uh, we see a lot of expense here uh, that wasn't anticipated until we saw this. So uh, we'll work with the board and see what we can do on that end and uh, work with, uh, with Dan as well on some of these items. Nope, we understand. Uh, Tom, any... Um Anything else you want to add to that or no? I think uh, John uh, captured my same thoughts with it and things as well. Okay. Yep. As Dan, as you know, as John, you pointed out, John, we, yeah, we've had, obviously we've got a couple of other 40 B's going on and, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously this is where we're obviously piggybacking one from the other to make sure we're consistent as a town. So I think yeah. that's where you're saying some of these come forward and um, hopefully we're getting a little smarter as a board and as a town in drafting our conditions so that's what you're seeing here but certainly uh welcome any any changes or any comments and um, i'm sure dan will dan will address them thank you okay um tom do you want to you know i don't want to put john do you want to talk about some of the um the neighbors or concerns at this time or would you prefer to wait till we have more information from the dpw uh, my my gut feel would be to wait till we have more information to DBW, but I'm certainly not going to uh, prevent you from discussing any of those. I know you've spent some time. Um, um, anything to have to do with uh, Lawrence Street, the water on Lawrence Street, or any of those things, I, I, we really need some more information from the DPW to, to be able to properly answer um, questions if, to any of the neighbors that, that have concerns out there. I think a lot of those questions relate to that, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's something else that a neighbor has or something, I'd, I'd be happy to answer that question. You know, if they have if they have anything. Yeah, I think we. I think at the next meeting we can probably we've got we've got a couple neighbors on the Franklin side and one neighbor on the North Fork side, and but a lot of them seem to be related to the road. So I think we can. Uh, I think we can hold off on those till we get more information to the DPW. Okay. Um, I did see receive some emails from Amy um, yesterday, and uh, we did provide written response to those. Uh, neighbors questions um, and submitted them back to the board today um, just so out of the record with everything okay okay Amy you have those yes yeah okay. I did it was uh, late this evening I just forwarded them okay right before the meeting did you forward them to us or to the neighbor or both both okay great all right um, any other questions at this time for the applicant. I think, um, as Dan said, we're going to hold off on the waivers um, till Bill's back, which makes sense um, in our next meeting. I think, Mike, were you raising your hand? No. Okay. No, I was just scratching my head. Okay. It looks great, Mike. Looks great. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions from the, any board members on? Uh, so on what we review with the conditions or with uh, anything we've discussed tonight? I guess not. Uh, go ahead. Oop. No, I'm saying I'm good, Chris. This is Joe. Okay. Yep. Amy, do we have anybody in the public forum who has their hand up? Nope. Oh, yep. Two just went up. We have Dave Diamond and Sandra. Okay. I don't know who went up first. Yeah. 
I'll go up. I'll go first. Okay. I love the camera time. So um, I just had a w one question, uh, Mr. Chairman. We this reflects back on a conversation we had when this was initially um, updated that we're going to have it here on the Larusso property, and it, it led to where the blasting is. Um, we're del delighted to see that big chunk of ledge, that stone, being worked into the plan. But I did see on the uh, the site plan that there was other blasting or an area of blasting highlighted in green. And the question is, um, how do we get a feel for how much there is, the duration? I know it's hard to tell now, but there is some experience in the neighborhood. And I think, you know, a, somewhat a, nearby across the town with the blast that went over on the Park Street project in, mm -hmm. in Rentham. Uh, and, you know, some of the neighbors in, in Brett's Farm, particularly those with pools, um, you know, had requested and monitored, you know, at their request, uh, the, the contractors were to put monitors in their lawn, you know, so there was two real concerns that we talked about in the past, and one was related to wells and blasting proximity to wells. And then as far as, you know, gunite pools, we've got them five Candom, uh, 44 Lawrence, 34 Lawrence, five Bretts, eight Bretts, uh, and uh, 22 Bretts, and six Eagle. So those are all pools. Don't need to, uh, not really looking for any answers on how to do this, but it would just be good to have that as context for follow-up conversation. Um, another th point I want to make is we did uh, speak with the applicant about maybe getting a site walk. I know that was pre-COVID, um, but sometimes it's easier to, to see something uh, in an area of excavation, say hey, this, this is the amount of stuff that has to come out, um, this kind of equipment, this type of blasting will do, and just get us some estimation. So I'm just trying to keep us from having to knee jerk or cover ground we've, we've covered before on this and get proactive on the blasting concerns. That's it. Okay. Uh, Tom, do you want to add anything to that or? Um, right now, I mean, actually, I don't know how the board feels about a site walk or something um, with COVID with things. We're still happy to, you know, to do that if they wanted to. We would be limited to less than 10 people for sure. Um, or maybe it'd be two groups. Um, but, I mean, I'm still happy to do that if that's something the board even wants to consider at this point in time. Uh, I think, you know, I think, Dave, to your point, maybe let's see where we're going with some of these. As we sure. look at these conditions, maybe we'll have to do a sidewalk at some point. Um, and again, this with the blasting, we are, and I think Dan mentioned it, maybe talk to Sean Reardon, and I've actually tried to reach out to a large blasting company to, um, who does presentations, maybe to get some feel uh, for some of these blasting issues. So we can- Great, better thank you very much. There seems to be-, be uh, good. Thank you. Uh, you get to do some presentation work, so it might be worthwhile to, um, to get some of that so we can give everybody a better feel for what really goes on with blasting these days and what the, uh, the requirements are, okay? Good, thank you very much. And one other comment too, I mean, we're not asking for any waivers from any local bylaws with blasting or anything else if it's required. Um, there's obviously state requirements as well. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a very heavily regulated um, industry with everything um, that requires a lot of uh, insurance, a lot of uh, um, oversight with it. So um, we're not looking for anything from that locally as, as well with things. So I know, I know they have pre-blasting surveys and they have some strict requirements as well. Thanks. Very Sam. helpful. Thanks, Dave. Is Sandra there, um, Amy? Hi. Yes. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. All right. So uh, I had sent some questions, and I, I don't expect an answer tonight, that, but maybe you can forward them um, and see if people can answer some of them. One of them was about the topsoil in a zone two. And I didn't see anything specified. I think um, we had talked about it a long time ago to be 12 inches of topsoil in a zone two. And I wondered what was possibly happening with that. Um, we're proposing four to six inches, Sandra. If, if we put down 12 inches of topsoil, all it's gonna do is puddle, it's gonna be mud, and it's gonna, it, it, the, the, soil, the, the grass and stuff doesn't even do well with it. Four to six inches, uh, proper irrigation. It's the way any um, athletic field is built, any golf course or anything like that. You just you don't want to have 12 inches of solid pack loam when you when you're uh, trying to 
grow a lawn or anything like that. Um, when so it, is that going to be specified somewhere in the construction management plan or? I think it was either in the landscape doc, uh, documents or in our okay. um, construction management plan, but I'm happy to check it out. If it's not in there, then we will add it, definitely. Okay. Then tonight you talked about the bus stop, and I'm just curious. So it looks like it's on somebody's private property, like lot one. And is that for all of the students that are in that neighborhood? Does that mean the bus is not going up and around to the condos? Is that for 64 houses worth of students? We were told that uh, the bus stop that uh, from homes um, buses that uh, they wanted an area at the end of the street. If they decide to go down to the street, that would be up to them. Um, we did. It is on a private area that would have an easement on it um, for the for the bus stop, and we wanted to keep it in a little bit so that uh, it didn't uh, um, interfere with sight distance. Uh, as vehicles are leaving the, the proposed street. So that was the location with it. And um, that's basically what we were planning, yes. Yeah, so, so it seems like a lot of students would potentially be down there. I'm just um, having lived you know, across the street from a bus stop when my kids are growing up, that, that can be you know, quite congested and, and a little bit annoying to that resident. I don't know if there's a way to partition off or move that house further away. It looks like they're gonna be pretty close to the, to the structure, like their driveway. Just think about it. Okay, yeah. that's, a, that's a great comment, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I guess there's no room across the street because of that buffer zone? Um, I don't have the plan right in front of me. I'd have to look. Um, the buffer zone is tight in that area on that. Yeah. So we, we wouldn't be able to do it there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That's all my comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we did, get your, uh, we did get your questions today, Sandra. So the rest of your questions. So I think, Tom, I don't know if you had a chance to see those yet from Amy that uh, Sandy did. Or... I, I haven't seen them yet. Okay, but we will get to those. Okay. All right, thanks. Next time. Yes. Amy, anybody else have their hand up? Or Rich? No. Leave your hand. No. No. Okay. All right. It looks like um it looks like we've addressed everything this evening that we were hoping to get to. So I think um at our next meeting, Tom, it looks like we'll be um refining the conditions after you and John have a chance to look at them. Um, hopefully we will be able to get the DPW to join us because I think we, um, we have a lot of questions for them from um, the easement to those lots 15 and 16 to the, uh, to the uh, size piping for the water main coming <laughs> down the street to the fittings. So I think uh, we'll definitely make sure we invite the DPW. Hopefully they'll have their analysis from a consultant so we can have a, uh, a good discussion with regard to that. Uh, and then um, I think we can probably, um, we can go into waivers after we go through those at the next meeting. Is that what you anticipated, uh, Tom and Dan and John? Um, that, that's sort of the timeline I was thinking. I, I can't answer for Dan and John. Yeah, I, I would think that if we have all the uh, information together, that we'd be able to get through the waivers and maybe the decision as well, the, the balance of the decision. And perhaps between now and the next hearing, we could uh, have some further discussion with uh, with Dan as well, and then bring that to the table with the next uh, hearing as well. Right. And we're gonna we're gonna keep pushing on the DPW to get information because it it really does it's a key to a lot of what's going on outside the uh, development. Yeah. Do you agree? It, yeah, it, absolutely. And I think having Bill McGrath here at the next meeting would be helpful too for the waiver discussion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Uh, I got one question. Um, just, I believe, like, Massachusetts is still in the state of emergency. So, just on the last page of the decision with regards to appeals, um, the governor's order, order 19 or 17, sorry. 
uh, appeals have, are extended 45 days until the termination of the state of emergency. Um, so just, just I think at the end of the decision, we should just note that as well. Okay. Any other uh, questions or comments from the board? Uh, David, Sandy, any other questions? All right. Um, Amy, so what is our next, uh, looking at our timeline, when are we next looking to put Abbeville on? Is that sounds like July 15th, maybe, or something like that? Um, yeah, probably July 15th, I think. Is that right? July 15th? That's, that's a meeting. Nothing is scheduled yet. Yeah. Okay. So by then we should be able to, and we may have to, um, you know, Tom and Dan and John, we may have to set up a workshop or something as well with DPW in that time frame. It might be worthwhile so that we're not, uh, so we can try to understand some of their, what they're thinking is if they get the report from their engineers. Well, let's see, let's see what happens. Hey, Chris, I, I, uh, I'm going to be on vacation that week. Well, it's too bad you're going to have to come back <laughs> during that vacation. I feel bad for you, but thanks for letting us know. I'm, we'll let I'm, you know not so, <laughs> I'm, I'm not so much concerned about being able to attend the meeting as opposed to <coughs> what might happen before that meeting. <laughs> what are you referring to? <laughs> Um, is there a way we could do it potentially like the week after or the week before? July 1. We've already, I think we already have one Amy scheduled for July 1, don't we? Or um, Well, we did 19 Shire and there's a good chance we're going to have 112 Myrtle and 144 Teton as well. That one. So yeah. maybe the 22nd instead of the 15th? July 22nd? Um, Tom, how is that for you, or are you, is it pushing you out too far? Um, let me just take a look at the calendar here. I gotta say, it's actually convenient to have your, all your information and laptop right in front of you with this stuff. <laughs> um, July 22nd. Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's it's doable. pretty much doable for me. I don't know how, uh, Rick and, uh, John, uh, you know, uh, John and Dan, are you guys good that week? I'm good. Yes, it's not up. Uh, not not everybody, Devin, gets to take vacations twice a year like you. I think I've um, I think I'm on my fifth <laughs> week in, I think I'm on my fifth week in 27 years. So I don't know how you get two weeks in less than a year, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I got my pre-COVID vacation. Now I get my mid-COVID vacation. Yeah. Why don't you work? Why don't you work on getting your engineering degree? <laughs> Too many I have the degree, just not the license. Too many, too many vacations, baby. All right. So, could I get a motion to continue He's the public? What a shot! <laughs> could I get a motion to continue the public hearing for the Abbeville Preserve at Abbeville till July twenty second at seven o'clock p.m. So moved. A second. second. Do we have further discussion? All those. Uh, in I'm sorry, Mr. Chan, I just mentioned that we will submit the uh, an extension of the 180-day period as well. Uh, we still have John, that as well. So. John, you're always accommodating. We appreciate that. We appreciate <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, this isn't. This is not the conclusion of the ZBA meeting, but uh, it is the conclusion of the Abbeville hearing for this evening. So thank you. I, I do want to apologize to the applicant for requesting an extra week there. That's okay. We'll, we'll just hopefully we'll have everything wrapped up for that July 22nd meeting when you come back. A right. A Amy? <laughs> yes? Uh, I'm just trying to understand. Do we then have no meeting on the 15th at this point? At this point, that would be true. Yes. Okay. All right. Woo! So now would the board like to take up, um, it seemed like it was pretty cut and dry, the 81 Pond Street tonight and see if we can get that cleared up and done? What's the, uh, 
wishes of the board. Mike. Sure, let's 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 knock it out. Okay, Joe, you're everybody else is okay with trying to get that one done since we're what are we at? Nine o'clock, nine fifteen. It's early. Nine thirty. Nine thirty for the ZBA. Okay, why don't we look at on? Why don't we look at that? One question, Chris. Chris, were there some outstanding questions we were waiting for the planning board? No, no, no. That that was you were think you're thinking of a Shire Drive. This is this is eighty one Pond Street. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. With me. Um, Rich, you can, um, can you bring that up to us, Rich? You want the, uh, the appendix? Yeah, he, they, he submitted appendix B, didn't he? Yeah. He had to do finding of facts as well. So, and then he submitted appendix B, I think. Or actually, no, Al, Al actually, they sub, she submitted that with her application, correct? She did, yep. Okay. So she's looking for a special permit for J7A1B, which is six commercial vehicles in the rear of the property. And those vehicles consist of a street sweeper, a bucket truck, and four pickup trucks. That's what I have. Uh, part of this is asphalt paved, part of it is gravel. And uh, according to our town planner, Rich, uh, that the gravel portion is grandfathered. Is that correct? Yeah, it's part of the previous site plan approval. Okay. And so that does carry forward? Yes. Okay. Um, we need Rich to talk to it. I don't think we need to discuss whether there was a former site plan approval or F11 because it really doesn't pertain to what we're doing here. Is that correct? Yeah, it's not really part of the special permit. Okay. I guess that was my question, Chris. Do we have to wait for any determination on the F11 or do we have that? We, we don't, ha we don't have to now. Oh, don't have to. No. Okay. Oh, that would be his ability to get a building permit. Am I correct, Rich? He would have to have his F11 or his site site plan. Yeah, he'll need it for correct. Right. The uh, square footage of the lot is 32,577 square feet. So it meets the minimum requirement of 30,000 square feet required for this. Yep. Um, the, the plans on file for this, that's got the correct, you know, reference to the engine, even though it was 1993, correct, Rich? The plan of record for this application, though, I have to make sure I have the correct one. I'll, I'll pull a hold on a second. The, what's on the screen is the plan that's on record was the 19, the December 14th, 1993 site plan approval from the planning board. What what would be the engineering stamp or anything or reference on there? Uh, so it says. No, let me hold on. Let me zoom in a little bit. So it looks like it just a site plan, Norfolk, Mass. Property address: eighty one Pond Street. There isn't any more title to it than that. But. Oh, what's it say? Landmark engineering. Landmark? Yeah. Okay, so that, I, I, I'm able to reference the, the plans with a. Oh, yeah, landmark engineering. Okay. From Norfolk, Mass. Okay, I just want to make sure I can document the plan of record properly. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I don't have any other finding of facts. Does anybody else? If you want, I'll go into Appendix B. Yeah, I don't have anything else. Will, will there be any um, special, well, I guess we talk about after Appendix B, any special right. conditions we're gonna put on this, like the, or just the traditional? You know, Chris, let's... did we say that the use is a commercial service? This use is, this use, I guess, 
according to Rich, this property in that prior site plan approval was deemed a, com a commercial services lot. Is that correct, Rich, or commercial services? The, the, and before it wasn't commercial service, the, the 93 plan was office and manufacturing, but what they have submitted under is commercial service under the site plan, uh, their uh, special permit application. If you see on, uh, on section one, which is uh, a, a, a allowed use by right in the on highway district of the C1. Right, but back in 93, in 2003, um, McKellar Realty Trust actually, the use yeah, then so the two, commercial service, yeah. Yeah, so the two prior F11s that were done, um, sorry, uh, oops, going too fast. Right, yeah. you just, yeah. Yep, so 93 was correct, was a commercial service. And then 2003. Yeah, and then there was another one in 19, oh, actually, I went past it, I'm sorry. And then 2007 was, uh, again, commercial service for the property. It's just that the original site plan, the parking wasn't based off of, it was based off of uh, office and manufacturing. So that, that's where I was talking about the F11. Okay. Devin, does that answer what you were asking? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's go into uh, Appendix B. The use must be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw. The proposed six spots to store commercial vehicles for property is consistent within C1 on highway current uses for commercial services. The use is in appropriate location and not detrimental to the neighborhood and does not significantly alter the character of the zoning district. Abutting six properties also have outside storage of vehicles. Adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided for the proper operation of the proposed use vehicle storage is to be in the rear of the property on a lot greater than 30,000 square feet. The proposal use would not be detrimental or offensive to the adjoining zoning district and neighboring properties due to the effects of lighting, odor, smoke, noise, sewage refuge material, visual or other nuisances. No change to lighting and no other zoning districts are located on the prop, uh, proximity. So I, Jody, your question is I guess he's not gonna add any additional lighting, but we should still put the standard boilerplate in that the lighting must be um, obviously facing the property and not off, off the property. Agreed. Yep. Uh, the use would not be would not cause undue traffic congestion in the immediate area. No undue traffic congestion is proposed. The proposed site plan has been filed for approval with the planning board and the proper number of copies submitted with the application for a special permit to the Board of Appeals, previous site plan approval, 1993. So to this, to this Rich, you are going to obviously receive, if we uh, grant a special permit, another F11 from this applicant, is that correct? And then you'll determine yeah, we'll need a new a new F11, correct. And at that time, you'll determine at what level, where they have to go with that. Real, yes, related to the site plan. Okay. And the use and purpose is consistent with the 1992 master plan and as most recently updated, previous site plan approval 1993 and after 1992 master plan. So that's our uh, appendix B. So I think to your point, Joe, yes, we wanna make sure that the lighting um, is obviously consistent. I don't, um, I don't think there's any other conditions we'd be putting on this at this time. I think- um, Yeah, because there's no construction, there's no debris issue. Either. Right, no construction, no debris. Rich, would we be, I mean, I don't know if it would, um, would we be limiting, uh, preventing them from, uh, and I don't think we would be doing this as this, because again, it's commercial services, we wouldn't be preventing them from putting uh, back hose, front end loaders, uh, triaxle vehicles. We, we wouldn't condition that because again, if, uh, if that happened, it would actually be a zoning violation. Is that correct? 
Yeah, I don't think you need. Oh, we don't need to condition that, I won't think, at this point. I don't believe so. OK. All right. Any um, any other comments from the board on this? No. Joe? No, 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 no other comments. Don? I'm fine with it. Thank you. Kim? Josie? No. Uh, Mike? All set. Kevin? Kevin? All set. Okay. Uh, Joe, since you had, Joe, uh, can you, you probably don't, uh, can you uh, bring up the script again? Yeah, one more time so I can be correct. Joe, Joe can put together a motion. First, before we make a motion. Yes. Um, just to be clear who will be voting on this, because I think Mike missed the, Mike, uh, did you miss the presentation on this, Mike? No. I don't think he did. I think he was in the window at the time. But go ahead, Mike. Were you in when, for the whole discussion of 81 Pond? Uh, I believe I was, but correct me if I'm wrong. Amy? Amy, do you have when Mike entered the window? <laughs> I think he entered when we were still talking with um, Jim Souza. Yes, I, yeah, I, I, was, I saw all that. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure I did. I did not note the time, but um, I think it was here it was before about, the end of the 19 Shire. Mike, when they were talking to Jim Susie about the 19 Shire Drive. Yeah, so I saw that. Okay. So the the voting members will be Devin, Joe, Don, Mike, and myself. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Yep. Nope. Good. Good question. To make sure Mike was in. Yeah, and Rich, can you go back to the actual notice of hearing at least so I can make a motion off the uh... either one will do. Yeah, right there. Yeah. I see it on screen. Hold on. All right, Joe, do you want to try to uh, put that together? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, one second. So I make a motion that we approve the application for a special permit per section J7A1B of the Norfolk Zoning Bylaws to allow outdoor storage of more than one commercial vehicle limited to the rear yard for the property that's located at 81 Pond Street, Assessor's Map 19, Block 72, Lot 29 in the C1 Zoning District. We have a second. Second the motion. Further discussion? Hearing none, okay. This is a motion to grant a special permit. I'll do the roll call. Mike Caliza. Mike? <laughs> yep. Yes to grant. Don Hansen. Yes to grant. Joe Sebastiano. Yes to grant. Evan Howe. Yes to grant. And Christopher Weeder, yes to grant. Okay. Any, uh, very good. We're all set. Thank you very much. Um, Amy, I am not prepared to go through minutes. I apologize. I haven't had a chance to review them. So unless anybody else has anything further they want to discuss, I think um, I call for a motion to close the hearing for this evening. Um, so well, uh, oh. Did you want to talk about 35 Leland? Um, we can, I think it's really just an administrative discussion, correct? There was, there was a mistake on 35 Leland where we, um, we actually cited the zoning bylaw with regard to the, uh, I think, renovation, where we meant to, instead of A, we wanted B, which would have been a, the raising of the house. So we had Rich correct the, um, the decision to show that it was actually the B, not the A, and that the home was being raised. So it was more of an administrative change than anything else. I think that's, uh, so I, it didn't require a vote of the board. I've considered a minor modification. I'm not requiring a public hearing or a vote of the board, since the intent was uh, 
Joe had, when Joe had done the decision, he had copied it over from the prior decision, which was, uh, was, was not correct. I think Mike did that one. So it was wrong in the prior decision. <laughs> I don't know. You, and usually when I write the decisions, I, I do refer very specifically to the application and the notice of hearing. Yeah, it was just, it was the prior application actually had the prior decision. So it was just, it just got, it just got carried over from application. Okay. Well, if it was my bad, I'm sorry. Nope, not, not your bad. It was my bad. I should have caught it. Devin should have caught it. So um, it's not yours. Uh, Rich should have caught it, but uh, we won't blame you. Um, Amy, do we want to talk, I guess why we're, we're still here is um, other than minutes is the organization. I know Devin yeah. has agreed to, um, Devin has agreed to be the B1 uh, representative again. Is that right, Devin? Yes. Thank you for doing that. We appreciate it. And that uh, is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Amy. I was just thinking maybe we should get him appointed, even if we don't do any other election of officers, in case we don't do it at the next meeting and then he has a uh, meeting in July. We can do it now. So we have to, a motion has to be made to appoint Devin to the B1 zoning district. Is that correct? I move to appoint Devin Howe as the zoning board representative to the B1 zoning district. Can I second that? Yes. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, election of officers. So again, as I, as I stated last year, if there's anybody who um, would like to be the chair, I certainly um, would not dissuade you from doing that. If you don't, I will continue to, uh, to hold the chairmanship if you'd like me to, or if somebody else would like to take over, I certainly welcome that. Anybody have any interest in taking over the chair of the ZBA? Uh, move to appoint Christopher Weida, chairman at Norfolk ZBA for 20 through 2025. That was perfect think, timing. <laughs> I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can give me a four-year appointment. Nice try. <laughs> All right. How about for the next for the next year? Do we have a second? I'll second it. Joe. Any further well, discussion? Nope. No, whoever, whoever, somebody else can second if they'd like. Maybe they don't I'll want second. I right. get it done. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then we have to appoint our clerk, correct, Amy? Right. And uh, Joe, mm -hmm. are you? Um, I'm, I'm, able to, uh, I'm able to continue, but you know, if anybody else wanted to do that, it's, I'm always I, I would encourage either Tim or Josie um, to uh, maybe become an associate to a Joe like Don did. I think, Don, you found it to be helpful, and I think um, – I think it might be helpful if you either Tim or Josie to, uh, we don't have to do that tonight, but think about working with uh, Joe on taking over some of the um, decisions because it does take a little bit of time to learn them. And uh, it certainly helps you learn your zoning bylaws the more decisions you do. So uh, if Josie or Tim would like to uh, volunteer tonight, we'd be more than happy to name them an assistant clerk to Joe if they want to think about it, certainly get back to her. I see uh, Josie's got her window open. Josie, are you, are you gonna say something? I don't know if I'm on mute. Oh, I'm not on mute, okay. Um, uh, I don't know what you mean by assistant clerk. You mean assisting Amy or something else? No, assisting Joe in writing decisions. Okay. Um, sure. <laughs> Great. So I make, a, I make a motion to appoint Josie Cordera as assistant clerk uh, working with Joe Sebastiano. I I'll second, second the motion. Second. I don't know that we actually elected Joe clerk. We, you know, we'll, we'll combine them both. We'll do them both. So we'll elect Josie as the assistant clerk and Joe Sebastiano as the clerk uh, for the 2020-2021 ZBA season. We have a second. I second. second. I think that was Don seconded, Amy. Any yeah. discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Do and we, we need, need a vote? vote chair? I did have one question. Do I still get to vote or? 
you you still as an associate if we if you we if needed yes you still will be able to vote okay and um mike would you be um could we um i i, I nominate mike Caliz as the vice chairman for the 20 20 to 21 season do we have a second i'll second that any discussion all those in favor Aye. 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 thank you mike how about that, Amy? Didn't we get that done well? Very well. It was okay. great. So the only thing we didn't get to was minutes, and that's all right. And Rich, we've got to have a discussion with regard to um, Shire Drive at some point because we got to get that resolved. I feel, I don't think, so. Mr. Souza. I think this has just gone on too long, but we got to we got to try to resolve that. That's um, it just it's got to be clear. And I think uh, I think we had three members at least, and maybe more, who just uh, it just <laughs> is not clear with this uh, the <laughs> definition between a contractor yard and a commercial service with regard to what what's going on down there okay okay all right do we have to discuss anything related to boardman street i'm not a, i think rich do you want to give us an up do you are you have me to give us an update on board rich it's uh, not on the agenda so i don't know yeah okay. okay well it could be a discussion item or a um i it can wait it can wait I think next meeting that we probably should have more information. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody have anything else? John, I noticed your terms up in 2020. You're continuing with the board, right? I, I am continuing. Yes. <laughs> you didn't want to be the clerk though, right? <laughs> I said, I am continuing with the board. Yes. Now what's going what's going on with the clerk here now? Is this going to be very challenging or what? I feel no, it's, just an it's just an opportunity to the one help me write some of the decisions, but at the same time you can see a decision from beginning to end, if you know what I mean, in terms of how it gets written up. Okay. So it's just a matter of you know uh, we'll go through some examples as we write up a couple of decisions. Sure. That's all. And then you might be able to write them up yourself in some cases. Like Don wrote a couple up in himself and Anyway. Joe always gave me the decisions to write that I declined. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a lot. It's actually pretty good, Josie. I did it for a couple of I think three or four years, and you learn, you learn a lot from it. You really okay. do. Excuse, so. excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, oh, Al Quigley, Harry, Al Quigley, Harry's hand just went down. You had your hand up, Al. I did. I, I just wanted to bring to your attention that there's a definition for contractors headquarters in the zoning. And it, it we know pretty, that. Okay. It's pretty specific on what it states, building contractor, plumbing contractor, or electrical contractor. That, I don't really see how that, that gentleman was any of those. Right, that's why we, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta understand it better. Thank you, Al. You're welcome. With that, do I um do I have a motion to close the uh, zoning board meeting for this evening at 9:49 p.m.? So moved. Second. Any Second. Further, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Have a good, safe evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.